Hello and welcome to the conversation. I'm Heil Russell. Uh, uh, where, where's my Where's my co-host? Who, who Who's with me this week? I, he- hello, hello, it's me, Joe Mud. <laughs> I I was promised Adele, and now I'm disappointed. <laughs> Joe Mud, what the hell are you doing here? That's a very good question. Um, I don't know. I just randomly walked into this room and there was a microphone and i started speaking into it and your voice came out of the speaker oh well i mean that's fortunate because i have this whole year and a half worth of youtube comments that need to be read (laughs) oh no (laughs) i'm gonna i'm gonna go take a nap you can get to work on those and i'll see you at the end of the episode all right well i spent the last year and a half um battling a severe heroin addiction to be honest um, I can still kind of see flies all over the place and still kind of scratching my arm as well. <laughs> Waiting for my next hit. I'm smiling right now because I don't know if you're joking or not. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that for the viewers to, the, the listeners <laughs> to decide. <laughs> well, I've got the next best thing to heroin for you this week, Joe. What's that then? Donkey Kong Land 2. Oh, I can't get enough of it. <laughs> 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 All right. Yes, it is our Donkey Kong Land 2 spotlight episode. It has been 20 years since Donkey Kong Land 2 was released. It was actually supposed to be released September 23rd, 1996. But Nintendo of America, and I believe it was released in the Americas first. Nintendo of America decided because it was supposed to come out on a Monday, they thought, out of their generous heart, we should push up the release date three days so it will be released on a Friday. And that way gamers will have it all weekend long. Now, granted, they did this because it was also being released next to something called the Nintendo 64. And they might they wanted to put all their products on sale with the N64 that weekend. But nonetheless, September 20th is the soft release date for Donkey Kong Land 2. And, um, of course, that always gets obscured next to the, uh, the, the N64. Yeah. But Bl- Bloody hell. Do you remember that off by heart, or did you just look it up? No, I, I, I remember that. Wow. I, <laughs> Joe, Joe, you have to keep in mind, I'm not a religious man, so I don't have to memorize things like the Bible. <laughs> this is the stuff that matters in my life, so I, yeah. I never forget it. I mean, I can't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> Who are you, I anyway? Play, I just played Donkey Kong Land 2. I get... I, <laughs> I get enough potassium for that banana yellow cartridge. <laughs> um, well, I wanted to have you on this week, Joe. And yes, I knew you were coming. I was just doing a little silly bit for the mm. listeners. Um, I wanted to have you on, Joe, because out of all of DK Vine staffers, past and present, mm. I think you have the funniest... I don't know if I want to say relationship with Donkey Kong Land 2, but you definitely react to it in the most amusing way. And I, I remember talking about Donkey Kong Land 2 with you over the years. That's right. And... Yeah, we, we used to argue at length. I think you eventually won <laughs> me over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think you eventually realized the absurdity of my view. And we're going to get into all of this in this episode. I don't want to give too much away right now. But Donkey Kong Land 2 is a very peculiar game in the Donkey Kong canon. Really, the entire Rare canon. Um, there's really never been uh, an entry quite like it. So I, I remember, you know, laughing with Chad, you know, a year ago that, oh, we're going to have to do a Donkey Kong Land 2 spotlight mm. episode <laughs> next year. And I, I could tell already his heart wasn't in it. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, I'm going to have to get Joe in on that because <laughs> yeah. if if any DK Vine staffer, past or present, is qualified to really give um, a quality assessment of, of Donkey Kong Land 2, it, it's Mr. Joe Mudd. So Mr. thank Joe you Mudd. for being here. Welcome back to the show. It's a pleasure. I've been sitting waiting by my computer, like gathering cobwebs, waiting for that Skype call for um, a year and a half now. <laughs> Thinking one day, yeah. one day they'll ask me back. One day. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you were last on. I, I think it was like 
early season three was the last time you were on. So yeah, it's it's been a while, but yeah. your your season streak has not been broken. You've been on every season thus far. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I should probably explain to the listeners, kind of, if they remember me, <laughs> what happened. Um, basically, the reason I left in the first place was um, just because I was working at this horrible call center job where I was basically a nuisance call. I had to bring people up and try and sell them insurance. And after being on the phone all day, I would have to do a Skype call with the rest of the DK Vine staff, which isn't a burden, don't get me wrong. But after I'd been on the phone all day, I was just like, oh, for fuck's sake, not another phone call, for God's sake. <laughs> so I temporarily, it was meant to just be a short sabbatical. And then I was going to come back um, once I was used to the job. Uh, I eventually got sacked and got another call centre job, so I kind of carried on. And then um, eventually I just decided that I just couldn't, didn't really have the um, energy to do it anymore. <laughs> um, not only that, but there was a sense of guilt, like there were all these things that um, not necessarily expected of me, but like kind of like, you know, I had all these responsibilities as a staffer to write articles and create content and things. And I just didn't really, couldn't be bothered anymore. Not that I didn't love DK Vine. I still occasionally post every now and then when I have an opinion to voice. Um, but <laughs> I just felt like with, I was too late. Sorry? It's with your Bopamotamus avatar? Bopamotamus. Yeah, exactly. I'm a lazy hippo just wallowing in the Joe mud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just felt it wasn't really fair that I should have a place on the staff when I never bloody do anything. <laughs> so I decided to um, jexit. <laughs> There's the chabatical, like this is meant to be a temporary thing, just like the chabatical, but this is a permanent thing, j- jexit. Um, <laughs> so somebody else could take over, someone like Mr. Nick Prohl, who's very, very talented. And yeah, he's done a great job from what I can see. Yeah, I, I actually don't like to think of it as us replacing you with Nick. I, I like to think you regenerated into Nick. Yeah. Much like, <laughs> you know, Doctor Who. And this is just a past incarnation that I'm speaking to. It's like an anniversary special. And it is an anniversary special. It's yeah. Donkey Kong Land 2's anniversary. Yeah, it is. Definitely. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like, I've tried not to sever ties <laughs> with DK Vine because I still love the <laughs> I still love the community and the odd discussions that go on. But um, I've just not really had the energy to do. Well, I've not really had much of a web presence lately, to be honest. I've kind of um, just kind of lay around wallowing <laughs> and self-pity. Well, the, the heroin will do that to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I've switched exclusively to uppers, and uh, <laughs> that's why I have boundless energy to do this goddamn show every day of the week. Um, yeah. Not oh. every day of the week, every every week of the year. God, every day of the week, could you imagine? Mm. Oh, by the way, to any um, potential employers or my mum, I don't do heroin or any other <laughs> drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh all, all the prospective call sac uh call uh centers are are like just scratching your name off their list yeah. <laughs> don't want to hire that guy yeah uh, well luckily for you we don't have any viewer calls to take this week this is purely going to be joe and heil talking about donkey kong land 2 lovely um, that's what it's all about <laughs> yes uh nobody could be bothered to call in about donkey kong land 2 <laughs> All right, well, let's let's begin. Okay, uh, 20th anniversary of Donkey Kong Land 2. And um, I, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, Donkey Kong Land 2 is probably the most misunderstood game mm. from Rare's entire years of Donkey Kong output. And it's probably the most misunderstood game in the entire Donkey Kong universe totality. Um Honestly, you know, I do this for a living, essentially, and I don't even know if I understand what the fuck Donkey Kong Land 2 really is. Um, it's hard to say exactly, isn't it? It's like it's not quite a port, but it's not quite its own game either. No, and the fact that it's a sequel to a game that went off into its own direction. Like, Donkey Kong Land was not a port of Donkey Kong Country. It borrowed some elements, some... some uh, some art, some music, um, enemies, gameplay, obviously, but it really was its own thing. Yeah. And the fact that this is a sequel, a build sequel to that game, and is also followed by another game that's essentially a, a sequel, makes this just the odd the odd man in the middle here. Um, mm. 
Well, let, let's let's go back 20 years because I really want to give listeners, especially the younger ones, and, and Joe, you're younger than I am. Oh yeah, uh, but by a bit. So I mean, you were around when Donkey Kong Land 2 came out, but I don't know if you how how keyed in you were to its release and the the build up to. Um, us knowing everything there is to know about it. No, I I, re- I went back as your as, as you suggested at your bachelor party. I did go back and re-listen to some of the Joe era podcasts, um, and I've already told the story about how I begged my dad to buy me what I thought was Donkey Kong Land, but was actually Donkey Kong Country Game Boy Color, and I, <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell him that <laughs> he just got me a port of the game that I'd already played a hundred times. Um, well. Yes. Well, maybe, maybe maybe I'll have to have you on for the spotlight episode for Donkey Kong Country Game Boy Color because if there's any game <laughs> that rivals Donkey Kong Land 2 in, in DK Vine's absurdity, it's that game. Yeah, but we'll do that in 2020, for, for I day. guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like only f- a friend of mine. Only four years away, Joe. That's only four years away. I mean, <laughs> we, we laugh now, oh, 2020, but it's, it's creeping up. It is. It's creepy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, a friend of mine <laughs> was recently cleaning out his house because he's preparing to move. Um, and he showed me this big um, stack of Ninten- old Nintendo cartridges he's got. And he's got Donkey Kong Land 1 and 2 in their banana yellow glory. And I just like squealed like a fanboy. Like, ah! <laughs> I was just so <laughs> happy to see actual Donkey Kong Land 1 and 2 cartridges. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, okay, so... So yeah, you you may not actually remember the build up then, which is good because I I, I want this to be kind of um, a historical trip through time for a lot of our younger listeners who weren't there for Donkey Kong Land Two and, and its release because yeah. the stretch between Donkey Kong Country Two's release, which was um, late November, early December, nineteen ninety five, depending on your region, mm-hmm. and um, and and the release for Donkey Kong Land Two. Or at least it's revealed. The reveal for Donkey Kong Land 2 came in, uh, I believe, June 1996. So that was uh, an astonishing six months of not knowing when the next Donkey Kong game was coming. <laughs> six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But back then, that was that was ridiculous because we had Donkey Kong Country, and shortly after Donkey Kong Country, we, we found out about Donkey Kong Land, mm. and then right upon Donkey Kong Land's release, we found out about Donkey Kong Country too. So there had been this, you know, long stretch where we always knew a Donkey Kong game was coming, and then there was six months of radio silence, which is would be nothing nowadays. <laughs> but 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 back then, especially when you're a kid, and, and time is slower anyway when you know one year feels like three uh this really did feel like this massive drought of donkey kong games just yeah we were getting nothing and it i remember panic was starting to set in for me i was like surely they would have announced donkey kong land 2 by by now and nothing nothing it's one of those things it's like when you're younger time goes a lot slower doesn't it as you get older time speeds up which it, it's it's a mixed blessing when time goes slower because you're able to appreciate. I mean, you get a fuller life, but at the same time, then the wait for things is unbearable. Mm. I mean, and, and it would make each holiday seem like this massive event, like Christmas was yeah. this this huge deal because it only came once a year, and now it's now it's like fuck, it's Christmas already again. Yeah, fuck, I, I fuck still this. Yeah. recall last Christmas quite vividly. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, granted, it doesn't help that, you know, we only have six months out of the year before stores start putting out their Christmas garbage. But, mm. you know, but but even then, you know, it, it just feels like we're just the, the cycle keeps speeding up at year after year. And, and yeah, we're all heading towards an early grave as a result. <laughs> but um, it, it does it does uh, have its benefits, too, because we don't have to wait as long for say games we're really looking forward to um i mean obviously we're waiting just as long it's just uh, time has considerably uh like lost the meaning it did when you were a kid yeah like um, i i consider myself aging quite prematurely probably because of all the heroin (laughs) Um, (laughs) it'll do that to you yeah yeah like i'm 24 now nearly the age uh matt was when i first met him he was 26 no disrespect to Matt not calling him old well I call him old all the time just for shit shitty laughs just for <laughs> shits and giggles but like um yeah when he like um he's always kind of just been a bit more tired and confused and um 
had a worse memory than me and I'm starting to turn into Matt. Like, we have these conversations where gradually, slowly but surely, I'm becoming him and he says that he reminds me of a past version of him. <laughs> I think eventually I will evolve like a Pokemon or regenerate, like you said. Eventually I will just regenerate into Matt Corner. <laughs> It's well, okay. I would love to have a spare Matt. He's he's fantastic. Yeah, he is. Uh, no offense to you, Joe. I'm not saying I want to trade you in for just a second spare Matt. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's it, it, this like six months where we just didn't know what, what was coming. Um, it, it it was quite stressful for a young twelve year old Kyle. Um, mm. and. That didn't keep me from imagining what, you know, Donkey Kong Land 2 was going to be. Because, you know, once Donkey Kong Country 2 ended, and it had, you know, the best ending. I still consider it the best ending of any video game to this day. The most satisfying ending that still made you want to see what came next in the story. You know, the the accidental genocide of Crocodile Isle. <laughs> it was the same ending as Country 2, I suppose, but... um. Yeah, I think I made this point before that, like, when they re rose Crocodile Isle, everything was soggy and everyone was just miserable and wet. And this is kind of the last straw before they overthrew King K. Rule because after their island had already been sunk twice, when it got sunk a second time, they thought, that's it, this guy clearly doesn't know what he's doing. Let's well, s- overthrow him. Yes. Yeah. Spo- spoilers, Joe. Let's oh. not get into the whole plot of Donkey Kong Land 2 yet. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but Donkey Kong Country 2's ending really made me want to see what was going to happen next. How were they, were they going to follow this up? And With the exact same know, thing. <laughs> well, well, I... Donkey Kong Land had such a great fourth wall breaking premise that continued the story of Donkey Kong Country, but in a winking, self deprecating way. Um, obviously, for, for those of you who, who aren't familiar, who, who have listened to this episode before listening to the Donkey Kong Land spotlight last year, Donkey Kong Land's story was essentially. Cranky being super bitter that Donkey and Diddy had such great success on the Super Nintendo and, and, and said the only reason you had so much success was because you were on a more advanced system. I dare you to repeat the exact same adventure on the Game Boy and you're going to fall on your face and you'll be miserable failures. Yeah. Which and, I, I, and I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's completely fourth wall breaking it's nonsensical but it works for not only rare sense of humor but the world they built for donkey kong and 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 so you know donkey kong country 2 kind of ended things in a much more definitive way than donkey kong country ever did i mean crocodile isle was destroyed k rule escaped but you know were the kremlins just wiped out as a species like you, you had you had a lot of questions but you also assumed they wouldn't really be following them up in a Game Boy game that if the next time they would be followed up would either be Donkey Kong Country 3 or uh, the eventual N64 game. Alright, so so, so, you've, so you thought about all this when you were 12, you still thought what's going to happen next, what's happened yeah, to the criminals, yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> I, w- I would speculate with uh, my, my old friend Elliot. Uh, we would, oh, yeah. uh, the proto have- chat. Yes, we would have many uh, long debates. Granted, I would be the one spurring the debates on more so than him, but this is the way my brain worked even back then. So, um, I, I had already kind of figured it out once we got Donkey Kong Country, Donkey Kong Land, and Donkey Kong Country 2 that we were going to keep getting sequels in that order. So I, I just assumed Donkey Kong Land 2 was coming next, and then there'd be Donkey Kong Country 3, Donkey mm. Kong Land 3, and then they would shift to the N64, and we would get an N64 game, and then obviously a Virtual Boy game, and then an yeah. N64 game, and then a Virtual Boy game. I, I didn't have any conception that, one, the Virtual Boy was going to be a complete failure, and two, that game development, as it entered more sophisticated hardware would inevitably slow down and we wouldn't get tr- complete trilogies on systems anymore. Oh yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I've got a confession actually. Um, Earlier this year I abandoned the project, but I, c- I wish I'd c- continued it. Um, I figured out a way how to create 3D videos just using Flash. Um, and I managed to make, it's not 100% flawless, but I managed to make a 3D version of the Crocodile Cauldron map in Virtual Boy Graphics. Oh, you told me about this. I remember, you, yeah, you, uh, you, you Skyped me about this. Yeah, I was, I was going to make yeah. a few um, mock-up screenshots that you could look at, either if you had 3D glasses or on your 3DS. Um, I didn't get very far into it, but the idea is I was going to make some mock-up screenshots of what Virtual Boy Donkey Kong Country 2 would have looked like. 
Um, if there's some demand for it, if people want to see it, I'll, I might crack on with it and just make a couple more screenshots. But yeah, I was really impressed with the crocodile... No, not crocodile, um, crocodile cauldron I did. Which, um, it took forever, because I had to, like, um, you know, make... Basically, the way it works is just like having two eyes, one from one angle, one from the other. I had to basically take the original map and then kind of move, tilt everything off to the side to a bit. For a bit. Blah, tilt everything to the side a bit. And it kind of worked. It had a few flaws in it, but it was pretty convincing. <laughs> well, that's interesting that you bring up the Virtual Boy Donkey Kong Country 2, because at the same time, Rare must have been working on Donkey Kong Land 2, or even mm. before they started work on it, they were planning on porting Donkey Kong Country 2 over to the Virtual Boy. Yeah. Um, and, and we know they only got as far as a title screen, but I still have to wonder if that project collapsing didn't inevitably lead to just Donkey Kong Land 2 half-assing it. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Donkey Kong Land 2 could well be the remnants of Donkey Kong Country 2 Virtual Boy. Yeah, considering we really don't know anything about the genesis of this. So so, so basically, okay, let, I, I'm getting ahead of myself again. Um, here's what I envisioned for Donkey Kong Land 2. Yeah. As a 12-year-old, before I got the June 1996 issue of Nintendo Power. I, I was envisioning that the Kremlings wouldn't even be in it at all, because I thought, well, you have to take the Kremlings off the table for a little while. A after that ending yeah. for DKC2, you've got you've got to withhold their return, especially K. Rule's return, for a bigger game. So I was thinking Donkey Kong Land 2 was going to be uh, a game that introduced a new tribe of baddies, and, and perhaps it would even utilize the native wildlife of Donkey Kong Island. And, oh, yeah. Um, one image that came to me in, in like a dream or, or something was um, um, a group of stampeding zebras attacking the Kong. <laughs> zebras. So I yeah, yeah. I, I distinctly remember like them, like this, this like early ACM on the Game Boy of the the like the, the zebras like attacking you. And um, yeah, that's an interesting idea. Well, it's like one thing I've always asked about Donkey Kong Country is where the hell are all the lions? Why have we never seen a lion <laughs> on Donkey Kong Island? Yes. That's, yeah, that's, that's one thing I'm hung, hung up on too. There are no big cats on Donkey Kong Island, and it's it's weird. I guess there was the could... Cat of Nine Tails, but that doesn't really count, does it? No, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't count. No, that's that's more of a monstrosity of nature rather than <laughs> an actual like like even the retro games. You know, finally introduced zebras and giraffes and whatnot, but we still don't have any lions or tigers or, mm. or cheetahs or leopards or anything like that. Um, but um. So, anyway, I, but that was my idea, and in some ways, I guess that was something we eventually saw in Donkey Kong Country Returns many years later. Yeah, there was um, that, Zibby the Zebra, or whatever we decided to call him. Z uh, Zingy, I Zingy. believe. Zingy. Uh -huh. <laughs> or Zygmunt, Zygmunt. Zygmunt, oh, that's I'm the one, so, yes. I'm so sorry, but I could, I could feel people already calling into the hotline <laughs> correcting me. All those Zygmunt fans out there, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's weird those three animals in Returns that don't really do anything. They're just there to illustrate the point that the animals have gone mad. <laughs> yeah, and you just yeah. randomly see them just like um, like hops floating on a boat or popping up <laughs> behind a temple or whatever. And everyone's uh, just thinking, why don't we get to ride them? You know. <laughs> well, and again, again, my thing is, why weren't those the animal buddies we know? Like, why couldn't they have been, you know, like Radley and Winky and Espresso? And, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, but yeah, that and also just the return story was the native wildlife of Donkey Kong Island has been hypnotized to mm. um, attack the, the Kongs. And um, I mean, it, you know, I, I don't know. I, I only had vague notions of what Donkey Kong Land 2 was going to be. So I didn't I don't want to say I called Donkey Kong Country Returns uh, 14 years prior for Donkey Kong Land 2. But <laughs> um, yeah, it, you know, the minor similarities there when I was trying to think up what would they, the Kongs fight if there were no Kremlings around? Um, I also assumed, for some reason, that Donkey Kong Land 2 was going to be a straight sequel to Donkey Kong Land and not a portable counterport, counterpart to Donkey Kong Country 2. Um, yeah. For whatever, for whatever reason, it never crossed my mind that it was just going to be taking Donkey Kong Country 2 and, and making it into a Game Boy experience. I was, I was thinking Donkey Kong Land... Two was going to still have Donkey and Diddy as the stars, mm. and that it would have its own unique elements spinning out of the first Donkey Kong Land, as opposed to completely ignoring what the first Donkey Kong Land did and just 
trying to beat Donkey Kong Country 2. I, I don't know. Um, it took me by complete surprise. Yeah, it's like, um, I, I, I don't know if any, if um, the listeners remember, I always talk about my best friend, Other Matt, who um, kind of has... I remember Other Matt, Other yeah. Matt, yeah, he has a very vague understanding of what goes on in Donkey Kong Country and does, has a bit of a disdain for it. And he says, so how come, <laughs> how come you don't play as Donkey Kong? How come you play as the little one and Trixie Kong in this one? <laughs> <laughs> It's, like, it's only this year I said, you do know it's Dixie Kong, right? I said, oh, it, I thought it was Trixie Kong. <laughs> it's still so closer than Nintendo Power got in the, uh, the aughts when they called her Daisy Kong, um, which was an official Nintendo publication, keep in mind, call, calling Dixie Kong Daisy Kong. <sighs> anyway. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love that... Diddy is the star, and Dixie... I, I'm never one of those people who are like, why can't I play as Donkey Kong? I don't like that. This is Donkey Kong series. Uh, of course, I mean, Diddy's my favorite character in all of video game dumb. I mean... Really? <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, and I, I love Dixie, so I'm not going to complain. I just... I don't know. I, I didn't think they would be repeating themselves so much in the Land series. I always thought the Land series was going to be more or less its own thing. Yeah. You know, Super, Mar- Super Mario Land kind of, I think, put the template in my head where, yeah, Super Mario Land 1 borrowed heavily from Super Mario Brothers, but it was still its own bizarre thing. Yeah, Super like Mario the turtles Land- exploded rather than just yeah. becoming shells, yeah. You had the weird Easter Island heads. Mm. You had all, yeah, it was bizarre. Um, yeah, and Donkey Kong Land was bizarre in that it had flying pigs and <laughs> it, you know uh, cloud levels and in don- in a rare Donkey Kong game. It was just so off kilter, but still had that DNA of Donkey Kong Country. Meanwhile, Super Mario Land Two had a lot of the DNA from Super Mario World, but again, it still went in its own bizarre direction. Yeah, it was very much its own game. Like I think. Mario Land 2 is probably one of the most um, unique Mario games. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I was thinking Donkey Kong Land, the, the, the inevitable trilogy, would follow the same suit. I didn't realize that once Donkey Kong Land, the original, was uh, over and done, it would be more of an emulation of the Super Nintendo games than anything else, which... I don't know. Um, it, it's fine, but it, there's definitely a reason why... Donkey Kong fans overwhelmingly preferred Donkey Kong Land over its two sequels. Yeah. Because it, it, it's it's more essential that you play Donkey Kong Land to really get the full experience of, of Rare's Donkey Kong. And Well, it has its own unique like um, level archetypes, but also its own music as well. And some of the music is fantastic, like the Kremlantis theme. You know, it's, yeah. it's gorgeous. It's one of the best um, 8-bit tunes I've ever heard. Like, um, it, it didn't. It didn't just take um, what David Wise and Evelyn Fisher did. It also added to it with Graham Norgate's wonderful composition. Yeah, yeah, and just had all these wonderful inventive ideas that you just don't play and see in any other Donkey Kong game, like the, you know, the Big Ape City, the clouds, the blimp, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 and it, it didn't feel... It, it felt all right for it to be more bizarre because it was... It felt like there was less at... at there was less at stake being a Game Boy game. So you could kind of get a little looser. It was kind of like Donkey Kong After Hours, you know. had you, Donkey Kong and friends have had a few and they're going to get a little sillier, but it's fine um, because it's still rooted in that Donkey Kong Country um, philosophy and aesthetic. And... Um, I loved the original Donkey Kong Land, and which is why I was looking forward to seeing what they were going to do for Donkey Kong Land 2. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I first learned about Donkey Kong Land 2, uh, or as it was known back then, Donkey Kong Land 2, Diddy's Conquest. Still Diddy's Conquest, yeah. Just, yes, yes. Well, have you seen the, the Japanese titles for these Donkey Kong Land games? They're all just, like, completely irrelevant to... Yeah. <laughs> it's like, the first one's, like, oh, I don't know, let me look it up. Super Donkey Kong Game Boy or something. <laughs> Um, and, and then, and then, is it isn't like the third one, which was only for the Game Boy Color over there? Yeah, something like it, it like Dinky and Dixie's, Dinky and Dixie's like, adventure or something. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's funny because like they got they got um, Donkey Kong Land three in color, and we didn't, but we got Pokemon Yellow in color, and they didn't. So you know, it's a fair trade, I'd say. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm glad we had the consistency where 
you know, the three Donkey Kong Land games were for the same iteration of the Game Boy, yeah. I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want, that, that would bug the OCD center of my brain as much mm -hmm. as I would want now for Nintendo to give us that version of Donkey Kong Land 3 on the, um, the virtual console. Mm. Um, I'm fine at the time that we didn't get it because I like to have things in a nice, neat, orderly row. Um, I am very Nazi-esque in a lot of ways. <laughs> not, 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 not in the, uh, the racial genocide aspect. No, no. If, if anything, I, I have, I mean, the, the Nazis were very, uh, orderly and they had a great fashion sense. They had that great Hugo Boss, uh, look. So. Can't argue um, with that. Can, yeah, yeah. The, the Autobahn, come on. It's fantastic. Hmm. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, so I'm just, sorry, I'm just Wikipediaing the titles for the Donkey Kong Land games. The first one's called Super Donkey Kong GB. Donkey Kong. <laughs> That's a terrible name. I know. Donkey Kong Land 2 is just called Donkey Kong Land. <laughs> <laughs> and the third one is called. Da -da -da. Donkey Kong GB, Dinky Kong and Dixie Kong. How the fuck were they meant to know that these games are connected? <laughs> well, and I, th I think that's why it was okay for them to release it on the Game Boy Color over there, because yeah. they had no concept of a trilogy at all in Japan for hmm. these games. Um, because, yeah, that, that was one problem, because the, uh, the Super Nintendo Donkey Kong Country games were known as Super Donkey Kong over there, so you had that branding that was tied specifically to the system. Yeah. So you, there was really no way to really translate that. Donkey Kong GB is kind of rubbish, you know, <laughs> but they, they went for it. Um, Super Donkey Kong GB makes no sense, actually, no, in, in that context. It, it, that would be like calling a game like Donkey Kong 64 Game Boy Color. You know? <laughs> or Super Mario 64 DS, you know. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that still makes more sense, though, than Super Mario Advance 4 or Super Mario Brothers 3. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I was about to say that one. Super Mario Advance 4. <laughs> no, Super Mario Advance 3. Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Two colons. Uh, and see, the, the OCD Nazi S setter of my brain that I, I was referring to before I got on a horrible tangent mm -hmm. was um, hates the Super Mario Advance series. It refuses to accept the Super Mario Advance series because of the sloppy naming conventions. Mm. Anyway, so. Um, Getting back to when I first learned about Donkey Kong Land 2, yeah, it, yeah, it was the the June 1996 issue of Nintendo Power. I, I've told the story many times. Mm -hmm. I got the issue in my hands, and as I often did, I flipped right back to Pack Watch, which was the back of the magazine where they would show off upcoming games for the first time. And 1996 was like the still the infancy of like the internet becoming this thing that was in every household, and like I think it. I mean, as a household, my family didn't have the internet yet. It wasn't even, like, a discussion. Like, oh, yeah, we need to get online. Mm -hmm. um, that that did happen, um, I think, a year later, we first got AOL and then briefly canceled it and then got it back in 1998 when it was clear that, oh, no, you need the internet now. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, the old days when your mom wanted to use the phone so you'd have to disconnect from the internet for yeah. <laughs> 10 minutes, yeah. <laughs> or, or like um, America Online, which is what we had, which is what everybody had in the states back then. Like that's how you first got on the internet was America. Yeah, Online. we had that. We had that too. We had this posh actress, Joanna Lumley, who would always say, "Hello, welcome to AOL. You have email." <laughs> You She's had like, AOL. Over, it was called AOL over there. Yeah, yeah, but like, but like, it is it's this famous actress. Like, imagine the poshest English woman. <laughs> woman's voice in the world like posher than the queen she was the voiceover for aol so every time you had an email she would pop up and go you have a new email <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's so weird though i i didn't think i i never knew you guys had america online in the uk <laughs> yeah yeah it was just it was just presented very posh and classy even though it was still america online <laughs> Uh, I didn't know if they changed the A to anything for it to actually make sense over there, but okay. No, um, no, we, well, we've we've always kind of had an understanding that America controls our culture, and we've just kind of dealt with it. <laughs> which is so weird, because as an Anglophile myself, it seems like you guys control my culture, or mm. what I'm into. Um, consider it, yeah, it, it's, I mean, I'll, I'll pretty much watch, you know, BBC programming, and... Yeah. Uh, Obviously, you know, a huge fan of um, the music, especially from the British Invasion and, um, and of course, Rare. So, yeah, yeah you, 
yeah, it's like completely inverse for me, but um, anyway, um, yeah, so I didn't have um, internet in June 1996, so I still had to get all of my gaming news from Nintendo Power. Yeah, no, that must so, have been weird having to wait a whole month to, you know, find out information. But it, 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 it made it, it made it like this huge deal, like, oh, the new Nintendo Power's in my mailbox. Am I getting a new Donkey Kong game? Am I getting a new, eventually, a new Donkey Kong Universe game, you know? But, yeah. Um, so it was like your hands would always be shaking as you <laughs> flip through the magazine. And you would only have this experience once a month. So, you know, the, no Nintendo Directs, no Rare Where, no, you know, <laughs> Rare YouTube Where. channels. Yeah, yeah, no direct communication with Lead Love Day. This, this was it. Like, this was your one shot that month to get... It could either make your month or break it. So, mm. flip into the back, and all of a sudden, I flipped right to the page. There it was. And, Joe, in our document, in our show notes here, I have included the exact page that I saw. Um, it was... Hey, it was in the back of the magazine, and it you can see the announcement of Donkey Kong Land 2, then known as Donkey Kong Land 2 Diddy's Conquest. Oh, yeah. Share, shares the page with uh, worms for the Super <laughs> Nintendo. Worms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those worms games. Uh, and actually, yeah, the, the new worms game has uh, all this bonus content where you can have um, the worms where... Uh, rare character mask and ukulele mask so both rare and platonic feature into the new worms game yeah it's not 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 donkey Kong universe though because there's no physical character appearances but all the same um so let me read this uh let me let me read this hmm. this is the article this is the the uh, blurb donkey Kong land 2 got that first revealed the game to me yep. Diddy and Dixie retrace their steps, spins, and twirls from last year's Super NES hit, DKC2, in this Super Game Boy adaptation from Nintendo and Rare. The quality of the graphics speak for themselves in the screenshot shown here. What you can't see is the incredible animation that gives the characters a 3D feel, even on Game Boy. <laughs> the story is the same as DKC2. Diddy and Dixie are out to rescue Donkey Kong. Along the way, they meet friendly animals, including a pogo snake, a speedy spider, and a fiery seal. Fiery seal? <laughs> I'll get back to that in a second. Okay. Early indications are that DKL2 is a faithful translation of DKC2, so don't expect <laughs> new stages. At least they didn't get your hopes up. Yeah, they kind of <laughs> admitted from the start. Nintendo will release DKL2 this fall. Um, right. So, included were screenshots that not only showed off the game, but also showed off the Super Game Boy border. Now, remember, hmm. Donkey Kong Land 2 had a Super Game Boy border of um, Rare's classic um, Congo jungle palm trees, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. The original, yeah. Donkey Kong Land 2 instead had bananas. Yeah. And... I, these bananas are actually gorgeous. This is this is uh, some gorgeous ACM. It's just like mm. bushels and bushels of bananas. And um, the uh, the Super Game Boy. I just really wonder why they didn't who... bother to. Sorry. No, no, <laughs> no. Say, no, go ahead, go ahead. I just really wonder why they didn't bother to include these Super Game Boy features on the 3DS. You know, because like, every emulator ever includes this stuff. And, and this is how I mostly played the game. Um, the Super Game Boy, for those of you who weren't around back in that era, that was... As soon as the Super Game Boy came out in 1994, mm. that was it, man. That that was how you played Game Boy games. You still play them on the go, but can, you had two options. You, you could play them in crystal clear fidelity on your TV screen, mm. or you could play them on the old brick Game Boy. <laughs> the green with, one, yeah. The green. Yeah, yeah, with the, with the noxious green screen that you couldn't see in direct sunlight or in the dark <laughs> so you you had to be sitting in just the right lighting conditions. exactly the right level of light yeah <laughs> i mean it, it, it was a nightmare and the original donkey kong land was terrible on the brick game boy you eventually got the hang of it but it was almost indecipherable because 
they 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 put too much detail in the backgrounds and granted yeah. I mean, this was rare this is this is what they did they always tried to push themselves and the hardware to the limit always but you yeah. could you, you couldn't see fucking shit and this is where um donkey kong land 2 was a big improvement i think in that they just made everything much more legible and you could see what was going on and what who what exactly you were playing as what exactly you were fighting yeah, it's just which, a lot which, clearer which was immediately apparent in these screenshots. So yeah. you, you saw you saw one of um, Diddy um, like standing in a, in a castle type setting. You saw Dixie on um, a Kremlin roller coaster. Mm. Um, I, I believe that was a rickety race. You saw Squitter in um, ice. an ice cavern. Yeah. yeah, and you saw Diddy on a pirate ship. So that's right. Yeah. Though, and, and it should be pointed out they also had a render of Crook up up in the corner of the article for some reason <laughs> but okay so i saw i saw this and my mind it was like my mind was assaulted from five different directions because i didn't know how to process any of this information <laughs> obviously i was giddy that donkey Kong lane 2 this game i had been fantasizing about for six months was finally announced and, but but here like it was not going to be a new story. It was going to be the same game as Donkey Kong Country 2, according to Nintendo Power. Mm. What? And then I, I flipped um, one page back just out of, you know, I don't know, mild curiosity. And there Donkey Kong Country 3 was revealed. I see. And I think if, if they're going to kind of um, do something like that, I'm glad they, I'm glad, always happy when they warn you in advance. It's just well, to not yeah. get your hopes up. Yeah, like um, when Pokemon X and Y came out. It was like one week before release, some Game Freak employee popped his head around the door and said, oh, by the way, this game's not in 3D, even though it's on the 3DS. And I was furious. <laughs> I was tearing my hair out like, what the fuck? This is the flagship title of the fucking 3DS, and it's not in 3D. What the hell, you idiots? <laughs> so when they did um, the trailers for the Ruby and Sapphire remakes and for the upcoming Pokemon Sun and Moon, they always say in the trailers, parts of it are in 3D, most of it's in 2D. So you don't get your hopes up, you know. So you think they finally yeah. figured out how to do some bloody decent programming? Because the graphics are awful in those games. There's no way that it can't render 3D. <laughs> They're just really, really bad programmers. <laughs> I see. There's, oh. well, if only Iwata was still here, because like um, the reason Pokemon Gold and Silver are so good is because like they were basically yeah. fucked, so they asked him to help, and he basically reprogrammed the whole thing so they could get the game made. If he was still around now, he could get those games in proper 3D up and running. Yeah, yeah, they really need to get, like, at least a Ouija board or something to ask, him <laughs> and, and, and ask Iwata, you know, no. uh, and then, Go uh, I mean, I mean, granted, Nintendo, uh, we haven't seen anything for the NX yet, and it, it should be coming any week now, so yeah. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to keep my Nintendo, my, my alleged anti-Nintendo biases in check, because uh, I'm trying to be optimistic towards the big end right now um because they could be revealing the annex and it could be brilliant and i'm i'm, tr I'm trying to remain hopeful but uh um yeah yeah, yeah i really they, like they, this some um, detachable screen idea where you can use it as a handheld console and then you take it home you plug it into a box and then it becomes um a home console i like that idea a lot We'll, we'll 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 see what it looks like. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see what it is in the end. It could be like some stupid gimmick again, but it could be a stupid gimmick that makes them a lot of money, in which case fair play. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, N Nintendo's been in such dire straits as you know in the last couple of years that I really do think they should just get a Ouija board to get um, <laughs> Iwata and and Gunpai. Gunpai Yakoi and, and, as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just get just get all the uh, otherworldly advice they can get right now. <laughs> they need it. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, anyway, so yeah, but um, I, I turned the page one page back, and Donkey Kong Country Three was also revealed it, oh. right there. So that kind of blunted any disappointment that the the uh, alleged portness of Donkey Kong Land Two would have brought. Because I was like, oh, Donkey Kong Country Three, I I I have you know, I mean that was just a mind blowing orgasmic day for twelve year old Hyle. Mm. Um, because the I, I, was much, the Nintendo sixty four already out by this point? Nope, no. Oh. Uh, it was it was coming out. Um, I guess two months from then. Um, it was it was coming out late. Actually, three months. Three months. Yeah, it was coming out late. Late September in the West, I think it may have already been released in Japan by that point. Yeah, I'm pretty sure DKC3 came out after the Nintendo 64. Cause like, it did. Yeah, because Wrinkly's obviously playing Mario 64 on her Nintendo 64 in the game, isn't she? 
Yeah, just wearing a DK castle. <laughs> D DKC three came out two months after the N sixty four. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so okay, so yeah, DKC three two kind of blunted the bad news that Rare wasn't coming up with an original story for the game, mm. and it, it, <laughs> Nintendo Power made it sound like a watered down port. But he here's Joe. Here is the philosophy that even twelve year old Heil couldn't accept. Or or, mm -hmm. or, 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 this this was the way my brain worked. Yeah. I, I, w I refuse to believe this was merely a retelling of the same events, because I was still excited about a new Donkey Kong game from Rare, so I was going to have to rationalize away any, any statements Nintendo Power made that it was the same game, <laughs> come hell or high water. So, <laughs> well, I mean, luckily the... I mean, okay, go, 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 go. Oh, sorry, no, I was gonna say, you, you could argue it's not the same game, really, is it? Because all the level layouts are different. If it were exactly yeah. the same game, yeah. Like, um, I, I know Donkey Kong Country 2, like, the back of my hand. Like, even Animal Antics, I always think, oh, God, here we go. And then, not to brag, but I always do it in, like, two tries. But Donkey Kong Land 2 still eludes me, and it's still kind of... I still can't figure out most of the levels, uh, or where most of the DK coins are located or anything like that. I just don't know it inside out the way I do Donkey Kong Country 2. Right. So it's definitely a, com a different game, just using the same resources and the same order of the levels and the same worlds and all that, you know. Well, mostly the same. We can touch on that later. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so, but, but, you know, Nintendo Power didn't tell me this at the time. So l luckily, the Donkey Kong Country 3 announcement on the, on the preceding page kind of helped me in my first like really really major fan wank of, <laughs> of of my career so the dkc3 page in nintendo power told me that the kremlins had a new leader named chaos yes all caps and i was like okay so if donkey Kong land 2 was about captain k rule and the kremlins again maybe that could serve as some sort of bridge between the two narratives um yeah. it, it if, if it was merely going to repeat the plot of Donkey Kong Country 2, then maybe it was something bizarre like K. Rule attempting to prove to the mutinous Kremlins who were, you know, outraged over the loss of their island and the decimation of their race that he could attempt a do-over of sorts. <laughs> and, and, you know, maybe this, this was like the last straw for the Kremlins, and if K. Roll failed, he would be ousted as king, you know. Yeah, this is how and you, um, I think, I believe this is one of the reasons, one of the ways you won me over to believing Donkey Kong Land 2 was a different game, to, no, a different story to Donkey Kong Country 2, and that K. Roll said, wait, let's try it again, let me prove to you <laughs> that I am a worthy leader, and then he fucked that up big time, so they said, right, that's it. Screw up! Screw you! Get off our island! If we don't want you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and, it, and it's like uh, looking back on it, twenty years later, yeah, it's obviously the logic of a twelve-year-old who doesn't have much understanding of the way these things actually go throughout history. Like it, it would be like if, again, going back to the Nazi comparisons, it would it would be like if Hitler came back from the bunker nine months after World War Two, <laughs> and, 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 and you know, like broke the Nazis out of, like, Nuremberg and said, my bad, guys. Let, can I have a mulligan? And can, <laughs> can we try this again? Let's give that another um, go, yeah. Well, it's yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. It's like um, Brexit. Everyone's demanding a second referendum. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Which we're not, we're not going to get, but that would be nice. <laughs> well, well, because it's like nobody... <sighs> I mean, forgive me, I, I, I wasn't actually over there. I, I was only over in the UK for a couple of days when the, the Brexit mania was going on, like the build-up yeah. to the actual vote. I'm kind of curious but, about this. I, mean, I, mean, I know you probably can't discuss it on air, because I know you were sworn to secrecy, but like, I'm just wondering if Matt knew about this, because I would have loved to come and said hello to you guys while you were in the UK. Like, it, it took me completely by surprise when I found out you guys were at Rare Headquarters. Like, I've not got a lot of money at the moment. I am unemployed. I'm <laughs> just an unemployed layabout. But I would have scrounged together a bit of cash to um, pop up to London, no, to Twycross to come and say hello to you and Chad, well, had I known well, you were we, there. We really wanted to, like, meet up with all you guys, but unfortunately we had to be, like, sworn to complete secrecy that we were there at yeah. all. So it, it, was, it, was, it was very cloak and dagger, and 
Uh, it, it, I mean, I, I, this trip was amazing, once in a lifetime surreal experience, but at the same time, I was like, we have so many friends over here that I would love to meet. Yeah. Uh, well, fair yeah. enough, I understand that. That's fine, yeah. But, um, yeah, it, I mean, it, it was funny because I, I remember, like, watching the, the, the news. I was, like, actually able to watch the real BBC and not BBC America. And, <laughs> and it was, uh, it was, the, you know, they were discussing Brexit. And at the time, like, that, this wasn't even a news story over in America because America is so insular and they only care about what's happening in America. Hmm. So I was just like, how come, how come this isn't, like, a big story over there? This, this will really affect world events. If if this vote comes to pass, and I wasn't that worried about it, because I was like, well, surely you know this this they're gonna vote to remain. I mean, I know that's what I thought as well. I woke up one morning to see uh, like a hundred notifications on my phone, like the day after the um, referendum, and saw that everyone had voted leave, and I just hit the bottle. I was just, oh fuck! <laughs> I just started drinking. I, like you idiots, do you realize what, what you've done? <sighs> and obviously, I'm not well versed in your your politics, but I was like, why is David Cameron allowing this vote to begin with? This mm. seems nonsensical. It uh, makes no sense. Uh, it was annoying. Like I even went to like sorry, I'm going I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent here, but you know I always <laughs> do. But basically, like I went to the Stonehenge summer solstice in June, which um I didn't realize was such, was a big deal because Stonehenge is actually like about an hour away from me on the train. Um, but it was full of people who'd come from all over the world to celebrate the solstice. It's like a proper religious ceremony. Well, they said it was. It was actually just a bunch of young people getting drunk and, like, you could smell weed everywhere you went. <laughs> you just walked through these, like, marijuana clouds everywhere you went. Like, <coughs> it was like a, a music festival without the music. And um, this bloke with, like, this long, long, like, Gandalf beard went up and did this long pagan speech about the stones and Stonehenge and the old pagan traditions and then finished it off with and that's why we should leave the EU and then there was just like this huge <laughs> yell out outburst from everyone there yelling no fuck you fuck blah, blah, blah. and it just caused everyone at Stonehenge like everyone had been getting on so well and now suddenly there was this massive argument because he decided to bring up Brexit in the middle of what was meant to be like this traditional pagan speech Right. And I just thought yeah, there's a time and a place you know it's like I know this is a hot button at the moment a political issue but I came here to get away from all this bullshit to just um, enjoy an ancient tradition. Well, I, came, I went there to get drunk with my friends. <laughs> as the ancients did. Yeah, yeah, yeah as, exactly. Like, I'm sure a thousand years ago, pagans would have, you know, gone and had a had some mead or some grog uh, up by the stones <laughs> on the um, solstice, the longest day of summer. But yeah, I just found it annoying that this Brexit thing, like, um, I don't care if we if we're in, if we're out. The point is... Is it's just caused? It's, it's driven everyone against each other. Like people who wanted to leave and people who wanted to remain. They could. They were best friends before, and now everyone's just arguing and fighting and sulking about this whole stupid thing. When we should have just left things the way they were, because no one really knows what they were voting for. <laughs> in, at the end well, of the day. And, and that, that was that was my point. It, it feels like a lot of people didn't take it seriously or weren't considering the actual ramifications of it and, and yeah. then it was like they had the vote and then it was it was like then everybody was concerned about it and then it became a story yeah and this is the thing like, it's like but all you all and to all american listeners like let's think so many people have said to me well i voted leave because i didn't realize that we would actually leave if i knew that it would we would actually leave i wouldn't have voted leave which makes no fucking sense to me. But here's the thing, I know that in a couple of months, people are going to say, well, I voted, tr no, no, well, I voted Trump, because I didn't think Trump would win. If I knew Trump would win, I would have voted Hillary. So what I'm saying, I'm what? begging you listeners, please do not vote Trump, because he will win if you vote for him. <laughs> Actually, I, I, think, I think the more comparable analogy would be, uh, well, I voted Gary Johnson, because I didn't think Trump would win, <laughs> yeah. beca because I couldn't vote for Hillary, because, uh, w uh emails. Emails, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. This is just, like, one thing I always say about Hillary, is like, yeah, she broke the law, but come on, we all have. Like, he who is without sin casts the first stone. Not only that, but, I mean, she, she, she just got caught. She probably did something that every politician has done. <laughs> she just I, was unfortunate enough to get caught. Ah, uh, anyway. Anyway, yeah, anyway. anyway let's, we're getting off. Back to Donkey Kong Land 2. <laughs> yes, yeah, well, I, I can tie it back together. So it yeah. would be like if, if um, after Trump loses in November... Oh, we can he, only he hope. Back. We can only hope. He comes. He comes back nine months later, and he says, "Let me try this election again." <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, it, it, it's a twelve-year-old's understanding of the world, but it, in a weird way, it 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 gives Donkey Kong Land to it, if you if you are to fan wank it away like this, that it is essentially K. Rules trial and, and and if he loses he's no longer king mm. which we saw in Donkey Kong Country 3 Donkey Kong Country 3 he is actually no longer king the Kremlins consider chaos to be their new king yeah so what happens between Donkey Kong Country 2 and Donkey Kong Country 3 there has to be some sort of event we're not seeing and I think Donkey Kong Land 2 is that event we actually saw it we just need to interpret it in this bizarre way for, mm. for the whole canon to make sense. Yeah, um, exactly. It works for the sake of the story. That he and, and, and it also gives Donkey Kong Land 2 that kind of bizarre meta-narrative, that, that self-winking, yeah, this is a bit shit, of a, this is a bit shitty of a storyline, isn't it? What are you going to do? It, it, it gives it that kind of twist that the original Donkey Kong Land had. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, All three of the Land games have kind of got excuse plots. You know, like, um, <laughs> as Matt always loves to point out to me, he always says that um, in Donkey Kong Land 3, K. Rool wins because it was a race to who could find the lost world the fastest, and K. Rool got there before Dixie and Kitty did, therefore K. Rool won <laughs> in that game. Yeah, Do Do Donkey Kong Land 3 is also basically, it turns Donkey and Diddy into mis uh, misogynistic assholes by, by virtue of them excluding Dixie on their adventures, <laughs> and... Uh, I, I like that it portrays... The, I mean, they're the real antagonists of the game because it's all about Dixie trying to prove to them that she's just as good. And, uh, yeah, uh, yeah it, it's, it's weird because Donkey Kong Land kind of portrays Cranky as an off-screen antagonist. <laughs> Donkey Kong Land 3 does the same for Donkey and Diddy. It, the Land games are yeah. pretty weird when you actually view them um, from enough distance. They are, yeah, exactly. If you sit down and analyse the plot. What I love as well is when they released these games on the 3DS, they kept the original manuals and the original storylines as well. Like, they, you know, this is the canonical official storyline as far as Nintendo is concerned. Cranky did literally say, yeah, well, I bet you can't do it on the Game Boy with worse graphics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um... Yeah, I, I like that they didn't, they didn't see fit to update it. Like, well, I bet you couldn't do it on the virtual console. Yeah, <laughs> no. Um, so anyway, yeah, the, the, the biggest hang-up I think my fan wank story would have was, well, Crocodile Isle sank at the end of DKC2, so how could they repeat the same adventure if there's no Crocodile Isle? So my, my theory was that the K. Rool and the surviving pirate Kremlins resurrected Crocodile Isle with Kremlin magic... Yeah, which 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 might seem bullshit, and it might seem like I pulled it out of my ass, but, but. need I remind you, Donkey Kong Country Three mm -hmm. would confirm that K. Rule does u use magic spells from time to time. He he trapped um, the Queen Banana Bird under behind that barrier. Oh yeah, that's um, right. And put a, put, a, put a magic spell on her. So. I, I, I don't know, like, I, I, I was right there, so I, I'm not I'm not saying, like, people should believe this DK Vine fanon for Donkey Kong Land 2. I'm just trying to justify why we have it in place. Um, so anyway, with Crocodile Isle, the top half was blown off in, in the previous game, and the yeah. rest of it was submerged. Um, so if you were to resurrect it from the bottom of the sea, that would make the whole island this this decimated kind of shitty wasteland <laughs> yeah. and that that actually fits perfectly with how the island and all the levels look on the game boy yeah well exactly you know you got crocodile cauldron and creme key emerging to creme cauldron so it's like it's kind of half lava half swamp i remember i once yeah. said to matt does this mean that like rather than green swamp water and red lava it's just kind of this horrible acidic yellow color <laughs> <laughs> and matt said to me yeah yeah precluding conquer's bad fur day and it's feces themed level this is donkey Kong land 2 and it's urine themed <laughs> urine themed well, world well yeah i mean and and as you mentioned rare uh, or the donkey Kong land 2 team in particular they answered criticisms about the first Donkey Kong Land by really making the background sparse. Yeah. They didn't... They, there's there's not much detail in there, which makes everything look kind of like this apocalyptic hellscape. It does. It's so bleak. 
and 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 so that kind that kind of works. That kind of sets the mood. And in in my fan and story that I came up with, again, I need to specify when I was 12 years old, the Gangplank Galleon, um, with K. Rule on it, you know, sails back to Dongyong Island on a day when the Kongs and their friends are all on the beach, and so. My rationale was that any Kong or animal buddy who is excluded from this adventure simply wasn't hanging out at the beach that day. And when K. Roll uh, re kidnapped Donkey Kong. Mm. So that would mean that Cranky Kong, Swanky Kong, and Glimmer the Anglerfish <laughs> all had better things to do on that day. And that's why they're not in Donkey Kong Land. <laughs> Glimmer the Anglerfish had better things to do. <laughs> so, so, sorry, mate. Got a poker tournament at four. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I it, yeah. I mean, in, yeah. in my brain, of course, Candy, Winky, and Espresso uh, weren't there either. And of course, they weren't in the original Donkey Kong Country too. Well, they were canonically there because they're in the Game Boy Advance version. You know, they're like, they're like well, um, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but canonically, they have never been in Donkey Kong Land too. No, so. that too. That, like. Most of the Kongs thought, this bullshit again, fuck this. You, you're on your own this time, Diddy and Dixie. You can sort this out yourselves. Yeah, only, Rink- so- only Wrinkly could be bothered to actually give him a No, Wrinkly and Funky could be bothered to give him a hand. So, you know, you may laugh, Joe. Mm. You may laugh at me, but Donkey Kong Land and Donkey Kong Land 3 both feature unique stories. Yeah. They take place somewhere in the canon. So you can't just say Donkey Kong Land 2, the middle entry in this trilogy, didn't happen or, or that it was just Donkey Kong Country 2. We, we, I mean, we have to find a way to justify its place in the canon. Yeah, it, It's the middle entry of a trilogy where, where both beginning and the end are unique individual stories. So Exactly. The fan wank might be stupid, but, you know, it, it, it's held up as my personal canon for 20 years, as DK Vine's personal canon for 20 years, and it gives us a semi-plausible bridge between Country 2 and Country 3. So, I'm, you know, I, I'm 32 year, years old now, and I'm still okay with this. I, I, <laughs> it, it still helps me sleep at night. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing, like, like, I find, yeah, people in their late 20s... Like, oh, I'm turning 30 soon, I'm turning 30. Like, Matt used to be like, oh my god, I'm nearly 30. When he turned 30, he finally just shut up about it and got on with it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, thank god for that. I couldn't... No more moaning, you know? <laughs> oh, I, I I cried the day I turned 30. Oh. <laughs> it, it, and and then it's, it's, like a, it's like a bandage, though. You rip it, it comes off, and you're like, all right. Yeah. Well, I'm 30, you know, it, whatever. It's I'm still the same person I was, and so long as I stay off the heroin, I'll, <laughs> I'll retain my youthful glow. So yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> the, like not only the heroin, but also the crystal meth. I now look about 45 <laughs> years old. Just I've prematurely aged my body. <laughs> now here's the good here's the good thing about prematurely aging, though, is when you actually do become 45, you hopefully won't look any different. <laughs> no, no, but then I'll, I'll look about 65. <laughs> Okay, so, but eventually you're going to hit the point, though, where, you know, you, looking old when you're young has its benefits, too. So, you, you're, you know, you're always going to look the same at, after a certain point. So. Yeah, it kind of does. I mean, like, I'm a young man with a receding hairline, um, but the beauty of that is that I never get ID'd. I never get asked for ID when I go into a club or when I go and buy alcohol. <laughs> they never ask me for identification, like... Um, I can just march on in, like, even if I'm with, like, five friends, they all get asked for their driver's license. With me, they just nod and go, yep, in you go, mate, in you go, sir. <laughs> Which is like, yeah. use the ramp, do you need help at all? <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's funny, when I'm, when I'm out of America, I never get carded for alcohol, but when I, in America, I'm always carded, and mm-hmm. I always feel guilty about it, too, even though I'm well past 21 at this point. Mm. I, 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 I made to feel, I don't know, like, a shame, like, yes, I'm sorry, I'm tr- this is a fake ID, I'm trying to get one past you, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say it quite flattering if you still get ID'd, like, I've, I've actually got a friend, she's 24, and she still gets a child's bus ticket 
Like, as in, you have to be under 15 in the UK to get a child's bus ticket. And somehow she always manages. She just asks for a child's ticket and they give it to her. <laughs> I, guess, I guess she gets on wearing, like, um, I don't know, a big pink bow tie and carrying a giant lollipop. And they go, please, mister, can I get on your bus, please? I need to go to school. <laughs> I don't know what she does, but somehow she always gets away with it. That's actually what I do, too. <laughs> Fair oh. enough. I should give it a try sometime. <laughs> yeah, with the receding hairline, it might actually get you into some trouble eventually. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, over here we have How to Catch a Predator, and Chris Hansen will show up, I'm sure. <laughs> they just pop um, up on the bus. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, I, I should also point out a little bit about the drama over the game's name. Mm. So... It was first announced as Donkey Kong Land 2, the, the two being the number two, yeah. Diddy's Conquest. Um, and I hated the subtitle. The subtitle was mortifying because for me, the subtitle was the biggest thing that, that made it seem like it was just the same adventure as Donkey Kong Country 2. Um, then they released an early logo a couple months later that showed the, the, the title to now be Donkey Kong Land 2 with the two being Roman numerals. Yeah, that's Diddy's something that's always confused me, actually. Like, don't we consider Land 2 just the number 2, but Land 3 with the n Roman numerals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so Donkey Kong Land 2, Roman numerals, still Diddy's Conquest. Yeah. Then, when it was released, for some reason, it was Donkey Kong Land 2 with the 2 being reverted back to the number 2 and no subtitle at all. Mm. And that's how we know the game to this day. And of course, Donkey Kong Land 3 would fuck it up by having Roman numerals. <laughs> yeah, but I love our, um, com the, the commitment to that on DK yeah. Find that. DKL 2, DKL 3, and no Roman numerals. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, like, how Rare came about, like, eventually settling on Donkey Kong Land 2, no Roman numerals, no subtitle, and then Donkey Kong Land 3 somehow getting the Roman numerals. Did they forget? The Donkey Kong Land 2 ha didn't have Roman numerals, and granted, this is this is an argument we need to save for the Donkey Kong Land 3 spotlight next year, but yeah, um, yeah it, it's just one of those weird things that I don't... The, the naming conventions and, and style guides for the Donkey Kong Land trilogy's names can confound me. They also altered the Donkey Kong Land logo a bit. They, they, they shrunk the, the land type. Um, if you actually look at it, and um, I included um, a, a link, Joe, if you, if you look in your show notes, to Will the do. artwork for the game. Oh, yeah, I can see and, it there. And the Don so what they did was the Donkey Kong Land um, logo, they shrunk the actual land word, and so it's more centered in the um, like jungle background banner. Yeah. Um, I love that the land games have a different logo to the country games, though. Oh yeah, so yeah. so do I. Um, and uh, but yeah, so Donkey Kong Land 2's logo has always been the odd one out because Donkey Kong Land 3 would revert back to the way the, the way Donkey Kong Land's logo looked with a more spaced out land. And uh, I realize this is only interesting to about two people on the planet, but <laughs> I'm I'm one of them, so um, I I want to share this oddness. Uh, I guess I'm the other the other one then. I just realized okay, that, oh. so I'm just looking at the link you sent me, like, um, on the back of the box, it's got DK, sorry, Diddy and Dixie using their team-up move, which they can't actually do on the Game Boy. <laughs> so that's <laughs> yeah, false yeah, advertising. Yeah. <laughs> it, a little bit, yeah. Hmm. So, uh, anyway, we, we got Donkey Kong Land 2, and I much, I much, I like that the Land games don't have subtitles. I, yeah. I like that they're, they're smaller, they're cleaner. They're less of a big deal. They're less an event than the country games. Exactly. So yeah. Imagine they, if they could like Diddy's other conquest. You could call it, you know, Diddy's conquest again <laughs> okay. that he attempts once more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and anyway, so the summer of '96, which I've discussed, I, I believe you can listen to the full recanting of those events in our season one episode, "Summer Swamp Ass." Yeah. Um. But Summer 96 was all about, for me, Donkey Kong Land 2 and Donkey Kong Country 3. We had a double header coming that autumn. Mm. And, um, I mean, you, after Donkey Kong Country 2, which was the greatest game of all time, yeah. and I still consider it to be the greatest game of all time. Oh, yeah, me too. It, well, yeah, it, well, it's hard to pick a specific favorite for me, but it's definitely like in my top five. 
Yeah. 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 Well, it, it's, it's definitely my my top game to this day. Mm. But after after you know the greatest game of all time, you wanted its two sequels, so it be, it becomes your life fantasizing about these games and every little bit of information doled out in Nintendo Power, you'd be like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> um, so Donkey Kong Land Two, we obviously got first. Um, came out September. Well, it was supposed to come out the week of September twenty third. And in in the mid-90s, we didn't have as strict release dates for video games. Mm. It would be, oh, the, the week of September 23rd. Oh, yeah, stores will begin in the game. Usually it was around Wednesday, but sometimes they'll get them in on Tuesday. Um, you just have to kind of call and check and be like, have you gotten it in yet? Have you gotten it in yet? <laughs> and um, we, we didn't have, like, the... the Eventually, like the rest of um, media, like books and uh, music mm. and movies and everything else, video games would start having strict, um, strict on sale dates where where um, stores would get them in a day or two in advance and hold them in their warehouses, yep. and then eventually put them all out in the same day, so that way no store could get a leg up on other stores by getting it first yeah it still happens today i mean um when i ordered tropical freeze online from a website called the games factory plug <laughs> no the games collection um i got it two days earlier than the official uk release date and i was over the moon i was so happy that i got tropical freeze for everyone else in the country <laughs> yeah yeah and i th- i think you know that's that's the only way that can really happen now besides um shifty employees selling them early yeah it's, um Getting them through online retailers and the shipping not exactly working out mm. um, as they planned. But um, I, the the N sixty four was such a big, huge launch um, for Nintendo that they actually did have a coordinated strict on sale date. And because Donkey Kong Land two was coming out on the same day, that meant that we knew exactly when and where Donkey Kong Land two was coming. And Nintendo of America, like I said, decided, you know, we could get a lot more sales for this thing if we allow all the stores to sell the N64 three days early on a Friday instead of a Monday because then kids and their families would be able to get get it for the weekend and play it all weekend long. Yeah. And um, I, I think in Japan, they actually, this is actually a big thing where they don't want people calling out sick from work when a new game console launches, so they make sure to launch them on a Friday. And this was Nintendo of America trying out the same strategy. And um, so I remember getting home from school that day, and this was so early in the school year when, like, you're still stressed out about the new school, or at least I was. I had a lot of anxiety as a kid. I still mm. do, but, you know, when going to school and just the social pressures of that and trying to fit in oh yeah trying yeah to kind of sink into the background and and you have all this like weight put on you by your teachers and adults and mm. you're you're made to feel guilty for every little thing you do you know yeah i know, um, I know that feeling too well <laughs> so 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 you know eventually you settle into the routine a little bit but like the whole month of september when you just have started school you're like still wigged out so I, I remember, like, the great relief that came with every Friday, getting out of school and being like, I'm done. I am <laughs> done with this nonsense for two days. Yes. And um, in it, this was my uh, my sixth grade – no, seventh grade year. My seventh grade year of school. And I um, – what, what I would do is every afternoon – get off from school and I go over to Elliot's house until my parents got off work and then um, one of them would pick me up and I would go home and got got picked up by um, Elliot's mom and, and um, she said uh, Toys R Us called they said they're selling us Donkey Kong Land 2 today if we want it and it was just like we weren't expecting it we were not expecting to get Donkey Kong Land 2 we knew it was coming the next week and all of a sudden, we could get it today. And I was, I was like, this, this has to be a mistake. I'm not <laughs> ready for this. I have embraced my body is not ready for this. <laughs> to, and, uh, but no, it, it was true. So, um, went to Toys R Us and got Donkey Kong Land Two. Mm-hmm. And um, both Ellie and I had had our copies, and um, we we agreed to play. Um, actually, we we agreed to play Elliot's first, but we both had a pack that we would beat my 
save file first. Yeah. So I I, I don't know. I because we first beat my save file because I was the first one to have Donkey Kong Country, and because of that, it kind of set tr the tradition for as long as we played these games together, we would always beat my game cartridge first. So whatever. Um, but we we went back to his house and we just kind of. That, that car ride back, we were just studying the box art and the back of the game like it was just this holy text. And um, so let me read to you the back of the box art. Well, first of all, let me tell you about the front of the box art because you mentioned the team throw up move on the back. Yeah. Throw up move. The team throw move. <laughs> um, yeah, by the way, listeners, I'm sorry if you can hear me clicking and <laughs> typing things in. Um, just like the old days. <laughs> it's just that my friend's yeah. quite close to my keyboard. I'm, I'm trying to keep it quite subtle, but yeah. Proceed. Jo Joe's, w Joe's working on his memoirs as we do this memoirs, episode. Yes. Yeah, yes. Oh, I'll never forget the day I did the Donkey Kong Land 2 Spotlight episode with <laughs> Kyle. Uh, so the, the front of the box art of Donkey Kong Land 2 has has something else that's not quite game accurate it, it it reuses a render from donkey Kong country 2 it doesn't have its own unique render like donkey Kong land did yeah and it, it's the render of uh, diddy and dixie swimming in glimmer's galleon and it has glimmer the angler fish in the background who's not even in Pearl, the game probably being he's the one animal buddy from donkey Kong country 2 that doesn't cross over into this game because they couldn't uh, figure out the technology to really make him work, um, to his, his beam of light. Yeah, because you can only have so many characters on the screen at a time on the Game Boy. So they just... Yeah. I, I like to imagine Glimmer was just, like, off on holidays. He's like, tell you what, if them Kongs come back, I'll just leave some barrels out so they can light themselves as they swim through my galleon <laughs> so they can see what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. But, yeah... There it is. Glimmer's one and only time on box art, and it's a game he's not even in. So yeah. So there are two lies on, on this box. Yeah. One on the this front and one a, on the back. <laughs> this is a game of lies. But let, let me read to you. Let's see how much they lie on the back of the box art. Okay. Wage battle against Captain K. Rule and his vast army of Kremlins. K. Rule kidnapped Donkey Kong, and he's demanding the entire banana horde as ransom. 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 Oh Ransen. god, that's terrible. It, it, it's not Rance, it's... Ransom. There's a, type, there, and there's a typo! There's a typo <laughs> on the back of the dog. <laughs> he's, not, he's not, like, dressing all the bananas up as Esther Ransom. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? There's just no quality control for this game. That's oh ridiculous. my god. Now, it's, 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 uh, of all the random characters they pick, they chose Captain K. Rule. Uh, I don't know what the porcupine's called, and Clapper. Cla Clapper is on the spine of the game. <laughs> on the spine? Oh. It's just so badly put together. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Spiny, isn't it? Well, no, what's the porcupine called? Sorry, I can't remember. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, Spiny. Spiny, really, Spiny, just like the, um, spiny shell things in Mario. Um... Oh my god, I forgot. Hold on. Yeah, no, I, I know the Mario things are called spinies, but I don't know if the porcupines are called spinies. Um, boop, boop, boom. I'm looking it up. <laughs> this is where Matt would say, this is great podcasting, this. This is really interesting to listen to. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's spiny. It's spiny. Spiny, you made yeah. Me, you, made my, you made me doubt myself there, Mud, but yeah, it was spiny. <laughs> Sorry. Because I was like, no, you're, I was like, you're right. The Mario guy, the Mario enemies are also spiny. All yeah. Right. Mario Wiki will probably list them both. They'll probably, well, no Mario Wiki logic. They'll probably list them as the same character and go, oddly enough, <laughs> in Mario, they seem to be spiky-shelled turtles. Yet, in Donkey Kong Country, they seem to be porcupines. But they must be the same character. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any, anyway, uh, following from Ranson, mm -hmm. um, it's up to Diddy Kong and Dixie Kong to rescue their kidnapped pal. Mm -hmm. A wild assortment of friendly animals like Rambi the Rhino, Squitter the Spider, Squawks the Parrot, Radley the Rattlesnake, and Engard the Swordfish help the two little monkeys in their adventurous mission. Each exciting level is filled with special traps, hidden items, and dastardly Kremlins. Prepare yourself for the biggest Game Boy adventure yet. <laughs> Which I think is a lie, but, um, yeah. Uh, it's pretty pretty ambitious for the Game Boy, but I don't know if it's the biggest one yet. I, I would imagine, uh, yeah, at very least, like, uh, Link's Awakening or something. Yeah, would be yeah, a slightly like bigger that, adventure, yeah. But, um, The black and white so, Game uh, Boy, anyway. 
we got to read the bullet points because this is when games, Nintendo games, always had bullet points to mm. sell you. A after the, the the paragraph description, it always had bullet points to sell you on what the game would be. All right, the Smash Hit series continues with this incredible Game Boy sequel. Play as Diddy Kong or Dixie Kong and take advantage of their unique abilities. Incredible ACM graphics have been specially optimized for Game Boy, which means. <laughs> They've been made more shit so the Game Boy can handle it. No, so you can actually see what's going on, unlike in Donkey Kong Land 1. Where yeah, you can yeah. barely see what was happening. Yeah. Fully compatible with Super Game Boy for enhanced colors and special border graphics. Border graphics are going to be what Trump puts on his wall. <laughs> Battery backed memory saves your progress. You can Whoa! save your game! Wow! In 1996! But, I mean, believe it or not, back then, that was still, you know, a big selling point. That, that was when you knew a game was quality or not, if you could actually save your progress. Mm. So, anyway, um, and this is still before the era where they would actually um, talk about Rare on the box art. Rare would not be credited at all on the box art. That didn't change until the N64. Oh my god, you're right. There's not a single mention of Rare. That's horrible. Um, because, yeah, Rare, Rare became such a huge selling point that, and maybe, I don't know, maybe the Stampers actually pushed for it, too. I don't really know the history, but, I mean, the Rare logo did become a huge selling point on games at, after a certain point, and I, I believe it was the N64 when they, I think Killer Instinct Gold, I want to say, might have been the first time they put the Rare logo on Fox Art. That's terrible. I really, I really think they should credit, you know, the people who bloody made the game on the box. Uh, <laughs> whenever, whenever they re-released any of the Country or Land games for the Player's Choice Million Seller series where they would discount the price yeah. and put a little seal on the on the box art, um, they, they would add the Rare logo oh, after good. the fact. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. This was just a weird time where they didn't put that into practice. Um, so, anyway. Um, yeah, I... It's, 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 besides the typo and the just oddness, it's, it's, it's fine for a description. It's a little, uh, hyperbolic, but, um, mm. I, you know, it's fine. Um, it, it's, it's not as, like, immediately memorable as, um, the, the Country 2 box art, which just has Cranky Kong bitching at you on the back, but, um. <laughs> No, I think I, th I like Cranky Kong bitching at me, though. I feel like that's the best part of every, um, <laughs> every, Donkey Kong Country release, if there's a bit of Cranky Kong bitchery. It's a shame there was none on Tropical Freeze. Yeah, of course, Don Cranky Kong was never in any of the Donkey Kong Land games. No. Oh yeah, that's true. He he, he played a role in uh, the Donkey Kong Land story, and his portrait was hanging on the wall in Wrinkly's um, refuge in Land 3, but besides that, yeah. uh, Cranky never appeared in Donkey Kong Land. Yeah. So... Um, I, I, sh I should also be pointed out, as we already kind of alluded to, it did still have a banana yellow cartridge, which actually shocked me, um, because the original Donkey Kong Land made such a big deal out of the special banana yellow cartridge. I mean, that was on the box itself, and Donkey Kong Land 2 makes no mention on the box of it having a banana yellow cartridge. Mm. So, you know, granted, it doesn't take much for Nintendo to change the cartridge colors, but... No, it... And I imagine... Sorry, it annoys me that they don't do this for um, DS and 3DS cartridges. Like, um, like um, say, the old Pokemon games, Ruby and Sapphire. One would be red, one would be blue. And then yeah. they did the remakes of them. They're just plain black cartridges. It would have been so nice if they'd done the little, even though they're tiny little cards, to just have them red and blue, respectively. Just, you know. It, it's, a, it's such a silly little thing, but it was such a huge treat whenever you had a cartridge that wasn't just standard grey. Yeah. And, and it felt like a huge deal, and it really felt like you had something valuable like i i thought like they the first pressing the first run of donkey kong land games would have the banana yellow cartridge and then when donkey kong land like the second printing or whatever it would just revert to a gray cartridge yeah but but no the, the entire trilogy had banana yellow cartridges they just stopped making a deal out of big deal out of it with donkey kong land 2 so yeah didn't I, um, I'm I'm, my version of donkey that? kong 64 didn't have a yellow cartridge but didn't 64 like the earliest releases weren't they yellow as well um, I don't know, was, did it not have a banana yellow cartridge in the UK? Or was that just... When did you get Donkey Kong 64? Oh god, I don't know. I, uh, I can't really remember anything before age 15, to be honest. I just know that when I was a kid, I had Donkey Kong 64, and it was on a grey cartridge. But I, that's, that's weird. I never knew there were grey 
Donkey Kong 64 is out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I imagine the earliest releases were yellow, and then they eventually went to grey. Same with, like, um, Zelda, Ocarina, and Majora. The, uh, the first release was gold, and then after that they just went to the standard grey colour. Well, Joe, I mean, come on. The, the Nintendo can't keep valuable gold cartridges in circulation. <laughs> That's just nonsense. Yeah, but even the, especially because they're made of solid, you know, 64-carat gold. <laughs> it, it, did always, it did always bug me that uh, Donkey Kong 64 didn't use the same color of banana yellow that Donkey Kong Land games did, but yeah. whatever. Um, it, it, it also, like, bugs me that, again, they don't keep the banana yellow thing going to this day. Like, Donkey Kong Country Returns, Don Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, they should have had yellow boxes. Um, yeah, something like that. Because Super I mean, Mario I mean, Maker is a yellow box. Well, m most Mario games have a red box. Um, for, for Mario, they use special red boxes for all the Mario games, or at least they did. Oh, right. Um, yeah, bugs me. Things bug me, Joe. <laughs> I got, yeah, I've, I'm aware I, of that. <laughs> clearly, as an adult, I've got my priorities in check. Mm. Um, anyway, um, so let, let's get into the actual game itself. Um, so... There are some, I mean, quite a bit of differences between the original Donkey Kong Land and Donkey Kong Land 2, although some things did carry over. So, you still had the hearts on the bottom of the screen to, to signify lives, hmm. which, um, I don't know, I, I thought that was a weird choice to continue to make, but... It kind of um, wastes I'm, screen space, doesn't it? It'd be better to just have a counter. Yeah, and I guess maybe they were just afraid that, like... I mean, your bananas had a counter, so why couldn't lives have a counter? Maybe this was just a thing they couldn't get the, the technology to work? I don't know. Yeah, it's, but, it's, um, it's odd. But there is an improvement. Um, along the hearts um, in the lower right of the screen, it actually now showed you whenever you had um, a spare Kong. Yeah. That's right. Um, because in the, in the original Donkey Kong Land, you, you had to rely on memory whether you had um, Donkey or Diddy waiting in, in the queue. Um, here, Diddy or Dixie's head will appear if you have broken him out of a DK barrel. So um, that, that's really helpful information to have and a really no-brainer improvement. Yeah, and you just have the death jingle when you knew that you'd lost the level rather than Donkey Kong Land 2. When you see your Kong get hit and then do the owl, I've de I've died animation, you weren't sure if another Kong was the other Kong was going to pop up. You were just yeah, yeah, yeah. for a Donkey and Lantern, you knew for certain that it was you know that you'd lost a life because it played the da -da 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 -da. yeah, which which is helpful. But you know, Donkey Kong Land, like I remember, like never really knowing when to take risk because especially Donkey Kong Land had some pretty long stages mm. and. I would sometimes forget if I had, um, say, Diddy or Donkey waiting in, in, in queue, and so you never knew whether to take some risk or not, or if, you know, it would just kill you immediately. So yeah. here you could be much more of a competent player by, by this little improvement. Um, the teleportation effects when you switch out the Kongs, because remember on the Game Boy and Game Boy Color Donkey Kong games, you never had the Kongs follow you, no. because you could only display so many characters on screen at a time, so they would teleport in and out. Yeah, exactly. The teleportation effect, it, it's more of a poof than, um... I beg your pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Ex excuse me, excuse me, Joe. Excuse me, it's Joe. fine, don't. Um, uh, no, Donkey Kong Land, you shrank in this, like, starburst effect. Yeah, it's... Where he here it's just like a puff of smoke, like you're just uh, a shitty magician, like, throwing a smoke bomb down. Yeah, it's basically just the um, explosion effects, like when a barrel yeah, blow yeah. blows up or whatever, and they just um, have the, the other Kong appear, which is much quicker. Because Donkey Kong Land is a bit yeah. long-winded sometimes with that whole, <laughs> you know, and here comes Diddy, you know, special star effect. Yeah, it, it, it does remind me of, um, like, just this, like, incredibly pointless, like, stage show. Like, oh, you mentioned Poof. Well, it reminds me of uh, Job from Arrested Development. <laughs> That's exactly like, what I was like, thinking. <laughs> like, like, his, doing, his doing name his... is Gary. We don't want another lawsuit. <laughs> no, 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 the Poof <laughs> magazine. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it, it reminds me of his elaborate stage show where he's dancing to the final countdown for, you know, minutes on end without getting to the actual act. And <laughs> yeah. that's what Donkey Kong Land feels like when a Kong, like, teleports in and out, or when you get hit and a Kong, like, 
spins up from the bottom of the screen and then he like lowers down and it's just like get to the fucking point yeah. i know here comes diddy i know <laughs> i'm trying to play the game <laughs> All right, I get it. I, I, I screwed up. Stop rubbing it in it, my face. It honestly never bothered me, but it is it is a good point. Like, Donkey Kong Land 2 is much more, let's get just get right back to the gameplay and not, like, yeah. have so much bells and whistles on it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, um, Donkey Kong Land 2 does a much better um, attempt at emulating the gameplay of the SNES games than Donkey Kong Land 1 does. Which... which I'm not sure if it's a good thing or not, because, again, I, I was, like, anticipating more of a straight sequel to Donkey Kong Land, and I, I wanted I wanted to see the Donkey Kong Land style. Granted, there's not much difference, but I wanted to see, like, things like, um, the, the, um, the weird differences, like, instead of, um, like, the star barrels, where, you know, the, the halfway point, you would, it would have, like, these mid star medallions where that you would, like, fall out of in the original Donkey Kong Land. And Donkey Kong Land 2 just uses the star barrels, and um, it, it, it just feels much more like a Donkey Kong Country game, which I, I miss those weird eccentricities of Donkey Kong Land here. Mm. Yeah, it was, it but... was so, such a unique game, wasn't it? It really had its yeah. own kind of ident visual identity, which Land 2 and even Land 3 don't have. Like, okay, yeah. Land 3's kind of got its... Well, I don't know. The thing about the Land 3 level archetypes is they're all just kind of like a field with some snow and a waterfall and a jungle, and there's no, like, specific theme to each world. Well, La Land 3 was just the archetypes from Country 3 without the gimmicks. Yeah. Um, well, what, what I mean is so... that there wasn't, like, an ice world or a factory world. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every single place you went to was just um, a mishmash of everything. Yeah. yeah. Which, which is which is funny because, you know, I on the DK Vine Facebook page, which I'm the uh, the editor of, I, I every Thursday I do this series of posts called Destination Donkey Kong Universe, where I basically... The, the premise is, if I'm like the writer at a travel agency of the rare archipelago how would i sell this particular location as a place you'd want to visit mm. um and so i've been doing the donkey Kong land three worlds every so often and they're just so hard to write because it's essentially well this is a field with a bunch of shit in it <laughs> so <laughs> yeah it, it you're, you're right yeah uh there's no thematic cohesiveness to the land three worlds but anyway um Getting back to Land 2, uh, I don't want to rob all the good content from the Land 3 Spotlight episode, which is going to be a corker of an episode. Um, there's lots more animal buddies in um, Land 2 than there is Land 1. Um, yeah. Of course, it, don't... It, yeah. Am I right in thinking it's just Rambi and Espresso? Yeah. yeah. Land 1 only had Rambi and Espresso, which I kind of like because it's like Espresso's time to shine, really. I mean... Yeah, he uh, can outside... finally run on top of enemies without dying. Like, he can just run through enemies and kill them, can't he? He's, like, unstoppable. Yeah. yeah. And, and it really, like, makes Espresso seem more important than he eventually came to be. Because, you know, you think of, like, the holy, like... The, the holy top tier of animal buddies it's always Rambi and guard squawks yeah pretty um, much hardcore Donkey Kong fans will always throw in Squitter um, <laughs> I love Squitter but um but yeah really I mean that that's it and um Espresso not only has Donkey Kong Land but has Donkey Kong Country 2 Game Boy Advance ha has a whole mini game devoted to him and then of course is the, the only Donkey Kong character to um, appear in a rare game post buyout in Banjo Pilot. So, yeah, um, which is uh, <laughs> legally <laughs> um, legally dubious. dubious but but it's, oh, I don't think Nintendo cared, did they? N <laughs> Nintendo gives the Nintendo. Okay, Nintendo doesn't give a shit about Espresso. Espresso so. Yeah, I think you know yeah. they could easily just say uh, that's just Nin Espresso's um, cousin, like Mochaccino or something. <laughs> yeah, Mochaccino or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean the fact that Nintendo owns all these characters that they want nothing to do with, like uh, the the DKC two Kremlin racing ostriches, like Embazzi and um, Minogue and Minogue. Um, Rapido. I just wonder, and... just wonder where they came up with the ideas for these. Like, I know Minogue is Kylie Minogue, obviously the Australian, yeah. you know, s singer, but. And then Beardy is based on Beardy. yeah the um, like that 
guy that they knew at Rare who they <laughs> yeah, named yeah. Birdie after. Yeah, but some of them are just, well, well, some of them are just, you know, speedy and fast and runny. And, you know, <laughs> <but> <laughs> some of them are just bizarre. I'm just wondering, I'd love to know the full story behind all the names of all of the um, <laughs> ostriches and why they decided to name one after Kylie Minogue. Well, Runny was obviously named after his uh, incontinence, um, <laughs> oh, but God. his fecal incontinence. Yeah, yeah. Like you'd have to like try and avoid the um, trail of feces because you'd slip up and it would slow you down. <laughs> yeah, you never want to be caught behind a Runny. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but okay. Don't go land two had um, had Rambi. Mm-hmm. It also had Ingard, Squawks, Radley, Squitter, <gasps> Clapper. And most people forget the purple parrots. Yes. It, 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 it had quacks and, and squawk. I mean, mm. I, Nintendo only officially recognizes quacks, but there's two of them, damn it. There's uh, I, two I, of them. I, I still prefer to consider them drones. Just just the purple parrots, especially considering we've seen like entire flocks of parrots flying around. I'm happy to believe that they're. Like, like, I, would, I would call them, like, obviously you're the one in charge here, but I if it were, if it were up to me. <laughs> I would just call them parrot shoots, and they're just the purple parrots who are a bit crap and not as good as squawks. <laughs> but but Peon Pe- Peon did name the purple parrot um, as, as quawks. Yeah, the problem is there are two on screen at the same time. Therefore, we have to have a name for that other one that was on screen, even though there were two on guards. <laughs> that was a hologram, and you know it, Joe. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, and anyway, but yeah, yeah, I, I love that even the purple parrots were there. Um, yeah. And uh, even though I it was mean, in black the, and white, and you couldn't tell the difference between the. Yeah, yeah, and the, which was really frustrating because if you didn't have the context of Donkey Kong Country Two, you would just be wondering why Squawks was suddenly complete shit, <laughs> suddenly unable to go up, just down. <laughs> Um, yeah, Glimmer was the only animal buddy from Country Two who did not make it into this game for the aforementioned reasons. Yeah. Um, however, uh, about the Animal Buddies, this this is kind of an important game in that this was the first game you couldn't actually ride Animal Buddies. There were no Animal Buddy crates in the entire game. Yeah, I'm impressed that they pulled it off of Donkey Kong Land 1, to be honest. That they got, yeah, yeah DK to ride Rambi and Espresso. Like, I understand, yeah, because yeah. you can only have... Sent- like, it's like um, Miyamoto always wanted Yoshi... In Super Mario Brothers from the start, but they couldn't do it on the NES. It's only when the SNES came along they could finally have Mario ride a dinosaur. Um, so it's impressive yeah. that on the Game Boy they had Donkey Kong riding Rambi around. Yeah, I never really thought about that. That rare was it? That was, I mean, don't, the original Donkey Kong Land, man, that is a technical feat. Like, yeah, we 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 we, we can joke about oh it was hard to see, oh everything was muddy, oh like you would, could fall off the screen and die. But yeah. really, that that game that game is still a game that impresses me all these years later it's a game that actually probably shouldn't work and i don't know how it works as well as it does yeah um but uh yeah, yeah land, land 2 only had um animal barrels in the game so you could only transform into the animals and this would actually begin a trend whether i i don't think it, it i mean i don't think this is actually the game that was the reason this trend started, but this is the direction Rare took, especially when the Donkey Kong Country 3 team kind of took over and, and made Country 3 and 64. Um, from that point on, the riding Animal Buddies was de-emphasized. Mm. Um, and, and it was all about Country 3, you could still ride them from time to time, but for the most part, you would just transform into them. Yeah, there were levels like Pothole Panic, where you could ride on pretty much every animal buddy. But for the most part, yeah. you transformed into them instead. But even as which is, which, even as early as Tidal Trouble, which is level three or four, I don't know. Um, yeah. You transform into one guard, and there's no real reason why you had to do that. You could have just ridden him. I mean, the, the, the best times to transform into animal buddies are when you have to be the animal buddy. Yeah. Um, and when, when, when losing them would break the stage. Exactly. But, um... I, th- I think it's an unfortunate trend um, that they took because a- as much as I loved playing as the actual animals, um, riding them 
was was such a great joy. I mean, it, it, there's there's a reason Donkey Kong Racing is this great mourned game that <laughs> you know we we still lament our, the loss of to this day, and that's because there's a visceral joy when when it comes with riding animal buddies and. Um, yeah, um, Donkey Kong 64 especially was really just lacking in, in, um, in, in being able to ride Animal Buddies. And, um, of course, Retro, you can only ride Rambi. Well, you can only ride Rambi yeah. in the Retro games, but um, that's few and far between. But um, yeah, it did revert, you know, fully back in the Retro games. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's great that so many animal buddies are in the game. Uh, of course, you you can bounce off Clapper. I guess that might count as riding on an animal buddy. <laughs> besides that, yeah, I'll consider uh, that. Uh, yes, I I, if Cl- Clapper, I want to. I- Clapper is something I wanted to get back to because remember that Nintendo Power description that that mentioned a fiery seal. Yeah. I thought the entire summer of '96 uh, that Clapper wasn't going to be in Donkey Kong Land 2. And they were going to replace him with a counterpart animal buddy that breathed fire. Oh, I see. A, a, a seal that breathed fire. That it would be the opposite. That you would have to melt the ice. <laughs> and Clapper would. And, and Clapper's fire-breathing cousin would would have to melt it for you. So um, that 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 odd choice of phrasing and no power led me to believe this wasn't going to be Clapper up until. Um, Clapper was revealed. Hmm. I, I I still want a fire breathing seal, Joe. A fire breathing seal. Yeah, I, I can't really see the um benefits in this aside from like I don't know killing all the enemies in the water, like killing all those bloody <laughs> lock jaws and snap jaws and shit. Um, <laughs> R- Retro or Monster, if you're listening to this, or Kevin Callahan. <laughs> Kevin. Uh, Callahan. He's like Father yeah. Christmas. He's not real, Heil. <laughs> okay, for for one thing. We don't know if Father Christmas isn't real or not. He, you know, he might wipe your memory if you ever spot him, mm. and he might delude your parents into thinking they were the ones who left the presents. Oh yeah, true. There, you can fan wank away Santa Claus, Joe. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, if, if anybody who is working on an upcoming Donkey Kong game, God willing, if there's an upcoming Donkey Kong game, oh there is. If you're li- I'm 100% certain they're going to finish the trilogy. They're going to do a third game. All right, all right. Well, well. If that's the case, I will bet my firstborn son on it. Okay, I probably will never breed, but if I were to breed, I would bet my firstborn child that there will be a Donkey Kong Country three by Retro, and the Metroid fans will just tear their hair out in frustration. <laughs> maybe the maybe the fact that you're not going that you're probably not going to have a child and its its lack of existence is already proof we're getting one because you've already bet it and it's already been wiped from history. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, I- I- if you guys are listening, please put a fire-breathing seal in the game as an animal buddy. Just one stage. <laughs> Indulge me. I've been I've been a loyal Donkey Kong fan for 22 years. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and for me, please put some lions in the damn game because it's <laughs> Africa. Where the hell are the lions? <laughs> hey, where's fucking Squitter? Bring him back. Squitter. Bring back oh, Squitter. Squitter is the best one. My favorite animal buddy. Everybody loves Squ- Squitter. Squitter is amazing. Everybody loves Squitter. I would hate going, and, if uh, I was Squitter, I'd hate going shoe shopping, though. <laughs> Having to find four pairs of trainers in the same size and the same style. <laughs> well, speaking of Squitter, um, Squitter was also uh, interesting in Donkey Kong Land 2 and Land 3, for that matter. Yeah. For one, his, his um, detailed coloring wasn't presentable on the Game Boy, so he just looks like this flat, dull spider with no markings on him. Yeah. A- and um, also, yeah, shooting the webs, the, the, it was much different in how you controlled on the Game Boy. I remember you had to... Press select. To press select. Yeah, 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 yeah. That 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 took a bit of time to get the hang of, because once you figured out how to really properly use Squitter in Country 2, it was very intuitive, and I don't think the Game Boy controls for Squitter ever really matched that. They fixed it on the 3DS in that the Y button can be used to select. So you can... Ah, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, so you can use that to um, shoot webs, web platforms. Okay. Donkey Kong Land 2 also had, uh, for the first time in a land game, actual Kong helpers on the map screen. Yes. And it also had more SNES-like map screens in general. 
Not only that, but it also had titles for the levels as well. Like apparently they were in. You're the, right. Yeah. They were in the manual for Donkey Kong Land One, but you couldn't tell just by playing the game. All you knew was there was an exclamation mark next to the level to signify that you'd found all the secrets. But beyond that, you were clueless. The game kind of just drops you in, and there was so little text. Like I think the only text in the entire game is the credits. Yes, where it said congratulations. Congratulations. With no exclamation mark. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, Land Land 1 had just the weird principle of, oh, you got all the bonus stages and we need an exclamation mark, so we're just going to put it next to the actual, like, level marker, and it, it was always weird. Yeah. Yeah, Land, Land 2 actually kept the, um, the bottom part of the screen where the hearts are displayed, um on the map screen so it could display the names which actually is kind of a no-brainer i don't know why the land one didn't do it it's bizarre yeah because i mean it can't have been that hard to display that kind of thing sorry i i am um drinking delicious mountain dew baja blast right now (laughs) all right i've I've, I've just gone for some good old-fashioned cider like oh yeah yeah so i i mean i am slightly i'm getting slightly more drunk as we record but that's the thing when i listen back to our old podcasts i can hear myself getting more drunk as it goes on not drunk drunk but like slightly tipsy so i start off like hello i'm Joe mud and towards the end it's like oh. <laughs> the only time i legitimately got drunk on their show was my bachelor party <laughs> yeah, yeah what about um, but, um what was it scrambled eggs when you drunk during that as well Yes, but that wasn't the conversation <laughs> ah, now, was it, Joe? Okay, fair enough. Yeah, no, no, anyway, it, I, it's, it's an old tradition of mine. Like, I've actually been trying to detox this past week. Trying not to drink alcohol, because I've been hitting the bottle quite a lot lately. Um, but I figured I'd have to have a couple of drinks tonight, just for old time's sake. Because I used to, at my uni, I'd go to the student bar, and get a couple of bottles of cider, and I'd drink them during the recording. <laughs> and yeah, I can hear myself getting gradually more and more drunk as we record, <laughs> which is a little bit more, a little bit embarrassing. But it just kind of makes the conversation a little bit more interesting. I would say. See, for me, for me, I have to be highly caffeinated and energetic to uh, to keep up the levels of bullshit that spew from my mouth. But <laughs> um, yeah, I'm drinking Mountain Dew Baja Blast, which, by the way, one of the last bottles you can get because Mountain Dew Baja Blast lost. Joe, it lost, it lost in the deuce. It lost in the decision 2016. Mountain Dew Pitch Black somehow beat it in the polls, and now Mountain Dew Pitch Black is the one staying on store shelves. And Mountain Dew Baja Blast is being pulled. Yeah, I have to admit, I really don't like Mountain Dew. I've tried it once, I just really didn't like it. Um, do you have Lucas Aid over there? Well, you have. You also have. Um, a different formula of Mountain Dew. Like, your Mountain Dew ha- is made with real sugar. Oh. Ours, Mount- Our Mountain Dew is made with corn syrup, and it tastes different. Oh, so, that'll be it. Like we've got- and we, we, we also have all the different flavors of Mountain Dew. Like, regular Mountain Dew is one thing, but we have uh, Code Red, Baja Blast, which rest in peace for now, and uh, yeah, I guess- all, all, like, six or seven different kinds of Mountain Dew flavors. Yeah, so I guess um, our equivalent is Lucasade, which is just, you know, just an energy drink without caffeine in it. <laughs> and it's, um... Without caffeine? Well, it's got, like, taurine and other stuff that wakes you up, but it doesn't really have caffeine in it. It's kind well, of for our, a sportsman our... to drink. See, see, Mountain, Mountain Dew is not an energy drink, it's just a highly caffeinated soda. But we do have energy drinks, but they usually always have caffeine in addition to taurine, in addition to all sorts of other shit. Oh yeah, we got stuff like that. Red Red Bull, Relentless, shit like that. Yeah. Red, Bu- Red Bull does nothing for me, but this is this is a weird, bizarre tangent that has something to do with Donkey Kong Land 2, no. despite <laughs> the fact... Well, I mean, M- Mountain Dew Baja Blast, I guess. we That's Baja Blast, Baja the cutesy Blast. name we we give for the third retro game. Yeah, yeah. But, um, tropical Freeze, I understand. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, we always have to have a placeholder name for the next Donkey Kong Country game. Yeah, like Trump Remember when we used to call it Donkey Kong Country Forever, didn't we? <laughs> right, right, because Donkey Kong Country Returns, we just were following the Batman series yeah. naming convention. So the third one, Donkey Kong Country and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be Donkey Kong Country and Diddy Kong and Country. And Diddy Kong Country, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway... um, yeah, the, the the so the map screens were much more like the Super Nintendo, where you had an overworld and then world maps. Where Donkey Kong Land was just four world maps that were connected in a linear fashion, and you had to walk from all the way one from one, one end to the other to get to the next one. Right. Yeah. 
All right. So so with with the um, more uh, SNES like map screens, you also had Kong helpers for the first time. Wrinkly was running the Kong College, and and so you actually had much easier saving in this game because Donkey Land you had to collect all four Kong letters in a stage to save. Yeah. Which people hated, mm. but um, it, yeah, it, it, especially because you had levels like that stupid like cave level in Donkey Kong Land One where you had to jump to the left to hop on the platform before it flew away in order to collect what, the were cave. They, were, they doing the, were they doing the time warp? What? No, no, no. There was, um, oh, it was one of the cave levels in um, Monkey Mountains, or whatever it's called. You had to jump to the left as soon as the level started because there was a platform that would immediately rise up into the ceiling. And oh, when right, you jumped right. onto it, that was how you collected the cave and that, so in order to save your game. And it was one of like the hardest levels. And, oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, again, what I always do is I would just go back to the first stage in the game and just get all the Kong letters there to, if I really wanted to save. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but here you could just go to Wrinkly and, you know, go to Kong College and pay up. And um, yeah. how weird must it have been for Wrinkly to have been retired, to have seen all of her sc- um, school buildings destroyed and sank, and then nine months later she's forced to go back, go back to her old job in a, like... Only like, can you imagine like how water damaged all of her books were? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's why she couldn't offer any more hints. All she could do is save your game for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Funky Kong was also there, and it was uh, Funky's flights, but it wasn't Funky's flights too. It just like it wasn't. Flights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and I, I I think I even fan wanked that when I was a kid because I said. Well, obviously, when Funky's Flights 2 were destroyed, he discontinued that business. And so, since they're brought back, he, he doesn't have Funky's Flights 2 on the book, so he just has to run them as a normal Funky's Flights. Like, I, I really thought about this shit long and hard. And um, <laughs> this imagine. was like, this this was three years before I even started DK Vine. So, I mean, this is the way I operated even before I had a platform to spew my insanity. So... Honestly, yeah, I used to be have. the same. I used to, back when my brother wasn't a little brat, <laughs> I used to kind of try and come up with stories um, to explain what was going on in the Donkey Kong Country games. He's just, like, when he couldn't get to sleep at night when he was a little kid, like, three years old, I would sit there and tell him the story of Donkey Kong Country and how it all came to be. <laughs> 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 now he's, now he's just what- a 20-year-old, like... Asshole. So I just ignore him. <laughs> well, that might be become that might be why he became an asshole. Yeah. He he learned all the wrong lessons from Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. He he just took Cranky Kong to heart. Yeah. So um, there's also Clubba in the game, um, but there's only one Clubba's kiosk, and it's only on the Overworld, which is um, a pretty large deviation from Country Two. Hmm. Um. Cranky and Swanky are not in the game no. whatsoever. So, yeah, it, it's interesting that, like, they, they put in Kong helpers, but they only put in the ones necessary for the game they were building. Like, Cranky was just going to be, the, would just be window dressing, and they didn't really need Swanky's bonus bonanza, but they had to have a way to save the game, and they had to have a way to get around. So, yeah, hint, frankly, hint sort of useful. This is kind of one of my complaints about Donkey Kong Land, too. Like, I know Donkey Kong Country 2 did this as well, but it only did it once or twice. How, like, um, especially in, like, the underwater shiphold stages, you would have to swim through some of the crates that just happen to have no collision yeah. on them in order to get the DK coin. And so they, I know they did in DKC2, like, one of the, like, I think it was one of the castle stages where there are two, um, what are they called? The, um, two cannons shooting down at you, shooting cannonballs down at you, and to jump yeah, through yeah. the wall to get a DK coin. And that was right, because that was just one level late in the game. But, like, these underwater shiphold stages, you had to rub against every wall to find the one bit that you could pass through that had the coin behind it. It was just bullshit. It was so, such, so annoying. Well, and also, they never made player's guides for the uh, Donkey Kong Land games. Did they not? And, oh. nope, nope. And, and, you know, this was before, you know, everybody was online and you could just, you know, find the answers to what you're looking for, you know, yeah. game facts or whatever, or, you know, hop on DK Vine and ask somebody. So, yeah, yeah th- you were really on your own and that kind of made for a, a bit of a harder experience. So, yeah, some helpful hints and, and, Weird, one weird trick um, <laughs> would would, uh, would really uh, you know go a long way, but mm. alas, you know they only had so much memory to work with. So, um, 
Anyway, and, and you know, unlike Donkey Kong Land, there were no unique bonus stages. Um, Donkey Kong Land had those medallion shooting games where you you know you collected all those medallions with Donkey and Diddy's hat on them. And it, could... it took me forever to figure out what those were about. What I was supposed to do during those games. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, but yeah, yeah, not, not, those didn't make um, a comeback. These were just Donkey Kong Country 2's um, gimmicks. Um, their 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 themed bonus stages. Um, brought back around again um so um I, yeah and, and as we said you know the most obvious difference between the two is that the graphics i wouldn't say the graphics aren't as good um i think that's an easy ass but lazy assessment to make just because the backgrounds aren't as detailed but i mean the character models are still great everything still looks really good it just less visually striking because they had to make it more legible. Yeah, it's so like when you consider like what Donkey Kong Land looks like versus what Donkey Kong Country Game Boy Color looks like. A like Donkey Kong Land is so faithful to the SNES, but you can't bloody see what's going on. Whereas Donkey Kong Country Game Boy Color, like the the characters are just so static and stiff and there are so few frames. This is a really good compromise in that the characters are still fluid and they still move around. But um, they've obviously drawn extra features on, so you can see what is supposed to be going on. Yeah, it's the perfect compromise, I would say, between being completely authentic to the ACM graphics while also still being able to tell what exactly you're looking at. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and um, I, I think you know, playing it as much as I did on a Super Game Boy, I kind of didn't really appreciate that at the time. But I totally get why they did it because. The majority of people who would be playing this would just be playing it on a brick Game Boy. So, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I was one of the weird ones who preferred to play it on the Super Game Boy just so I could have that experience. And I love the banana, the banana border, you mm -hmm. know. And but um, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, the Game Boy Pocket would come out like a year or so later, and and make you know the compromises they had to make kind of irrelevant, but. Uh, it's it, you know it, it's it's that it's nice that they you know understood the complaints from the original Donkey Kong Land and um, fixed them. Yeah, the problem with Donkey Kong Land was you could never really tell what was coming up, like because the characters, the sprites were so big that um, you just didn't well, have time well, to react to what was about to happen on screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was that, and also, I mean, in, in the and the archetypes brought over from the Super Nintendo Donkey Kong Country. Um, it was really hard to see, but in the ones built from the ground up for Donkey Kong Land, like um, Big Ape City stages and mm. the cloud stages, it was generally um, th things were designed better for the Game Boy. So, yeah, I, but considering all of these um, archetypes were brought over from Country 2 and there were no original ones here. I'm, I'm glad they made the, um, the compromises they made. Yeah, definitely. I'd say the look of the game is fine. It's like, um, with Donkey Kong Land 1, um, it's not quite as bad as people say it is. The levels, I would say, are really hard to look at are the ones, um, are on the side of a mountain, and there are boulders coming out of these holes in the wall. Yeah. Yeah, those are really hard to see because, um, the background is just too detailed. But with Donkey Kong Land 2, they nailed just the minimalism required to, um, be able to tell the sprites apart from the background. Yeah, they, they still conveyed what the stages were, but it just um, just gave you enough information that your brain could kind of fill in the gaps. Exactly, yeah. Well, let's talk about the um, the differences between Country 2 and Land 2, um, of, of, which, of which there are actually a great deal, despite what Nintendo Power in June 1996 would have me believe. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, this is the important point that too many gamers, I think, are still ignorant about. Um, too many Donkey Kong fans are ignorant about, and that's the level layouts of Donkey Kong Land 2 are brand new. Yeah. Um, not, none of the stages are actually the same as their Super Nintendo counterparts. Um, I mean, in, in most of the cases, the names of the levels and the worlds are the same, but and, and the archetypes are the same. But the levels themselves are kind of remixed. I guess it, that would be a good way to think about it. Yeah, because they it's... they couldn't do one hundred percent authentic copies because like the Kongs can't team up and they can't yeah. rise the animals. So you know they've got to mix things up a bit. It, it's <clears> kind of like that. Um, th think of it like um, 
that version of um, Ocarina of Time, the the Master Quest, where oh, yeah, they yeah. changed the dungeon layouts. It's kind of like that. They just changed the level layouts, and um, it's um, it's it's honestly not that different from what Donkey Kong Land Three does when you're really brutally honest, mm. because Donkey Kong Land Three. We used the same archetypes from Country 3. It didn't have the same gimmicks in each stage, and it had different stage names. But fundamentally, it's not too different from what Land 2 does, which is have the same like level archetypes, but not reuse any actual, you know, layouts. So yeah, a common criticism of Donkey Kong Country 3. I don't think it's a bad thing, but a lot of people don't like it. Is every level has its own gimmick? Every level has its own yeah. yeah. Whereas with yeah. Land 3, um, they're kind of just Donkey Kong Country levels. There's not really anything special about any of them. It's kind of just, okay, here's a jungle level, here's a snow level. You know, there's not really anything that makes each one stand out. But it's still fun, it's still good. And the thing is, it still uses almost entirely resources from Land 3. Like, the only thing I can think of that's different, beyond um, the battle against... Oh, what's the snowman called? Snowman called, I've forgotten his name. Bleak. Bleak! 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 Of course, yes, Bleak's, Bleak's house. Yeah, they... Come on, they... Joe, you haven't been off the show that long. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, the battle against Bleak is completely different in that it's a side-scroller rather than a, you know, snowball fight. Um, not only that, but also they reuse the cloud platforms from Donkey Kong Land 1, as in you stand on the cloud for a bit and then it eventually poofs away. <laughs> and then you... Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Apart from that, it just uses resources from Donkey Kong Country 3. But um, mm. at the same time, it feels like a different experience to Country 3. Whereas Land 2 feels... Well, like it follows the same story, but even though, despite that, the level layouts are completely different. Right, and and I think just because they reuse the level names and the world, essentially, and the story... Yeah. Um, too many gamers are, are hung up on... <clears throat> well, let's, let's be honest, that superficial superficiality of um of all of that and they can't see that the levels are actually new layouts i mean look if you like donkey kong country 2 and you're not going to play donkey kong land 2 just because you think it's more of the same well wouldn't you want more of the same of country 2 this is just like a bonus it's it's oh it, it's an it's the donkey kong country 2 experience but just more of it i mean that's not necessarily a bad thing especially for a game boy game Exactly, yeah. It's like, um, there are too many games, like, like, no one's gonna know what I'm talking about because I don't think there are any Tomb Raider fans on <laughs> DK Fine. <laughs> but, um, it, um, eventually after each game is released, they'd come out with, um, an expansion pack for each game which would just reuse the resources from each game, but they would reuse them for new level layouts. And some of it was very, very creative and imaginative. And these yeah. expansion packs, I would say, are completely valid because they use they do some very clever trickery with the level layouts, even if it just just does just use the same resources that the main games use. So I would say that Donkey Kong Land 2 is completely relevant in that, um, yeah, it's just a totally different experience of playing Donkey Kong Country 2 in that, like I said earlier, when I play Country 2, I know exactly where every single bonus is and how to get every single DK coin. With Land 2, I'm confused. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing <laughs> or um, where everything is or what to do. And that kind of makes it more interesting. It's almost like I'm um, playing Donkey Kong Country 2 again for the first time, but in black and white. Yeah, now obviously, if I'm going to be reaching for one of the two, I'm going to be reaching for Country 2, you know... 29 times out of 30. You oh, know? yeah, of but, course. Yeah, Country 2 wins over Land 2. But, you know, that doesn't mean Land 2 isn't valid. No, no. And and I think be, too many too many fans overlook Land 2. They, they, they never overlook Land or Land 3, but they overlook Land 2 mm. because they get hung up on the plot being presented as the same, the levels being presented as the same when they're not. It's not, yeah. And, 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 and they really just need to give it a fair shake. Um, it's, it's not going to be as good as Country 2, obviously. But, again, what is? I mean, <laughs> what I, is exactly, you know, sex? It, is that good as Donkey Kong Country 2? No, I think I've... Picked. Honestly, <laughs> I, I mean, sex, I mean, sex is a lot like a Donkey Kong game. You're always rubbing up against things, looking, <laughs> looking for a way in. Uh, looking for a way through, and, uh, you know. But, um... I don't know, and, and and then afterwards, you know, you 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 know, you get critiqued by um, 
some uh, cranky criticisms. But uh, besides that, yeah, it's um, I, I don't I don't know. I, I would imagine Donkey Kong Country Two can a lot of times overshadow sex. <laughs> but yes. um, that all that being said, um, I do want to circle back around to this point. I I I can defend Donkey Kong Land Two, you know. And 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 it should be defended in a lot of ways, but seriously, why were they so lazy? I, I, why, I mean, why couldn't the team come up with just a bare bones new plot? It wouldn't have been that difficult. Why couldn't they come up with new world maps and level names? Um, it it was, I mean, it was a different team. I think I believe it was a mostly different team that did, um, Donkey Kong Land Two. Um, or at least it, it had a different uh, person in charge. Yeah. Um, hence the um, just, I don't know, cr- creative bankruptcy that went on. But it just seems so uncharacteristic unchar- of the Rare that we knew, which always took pride in story, characters, fourth wall breaking, um, just the fine details that most game developers overlook. Rare was always all about that stuff. Yeah. And, and and I know that, especially I know now that, you know, you can't just say, well, you know, Rare as this monolithic entity, there were, there were teams involved, you know, that's the reason why Donkey Kong 64, you know, isn't as brilliant as Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah. Or, you know, Conqueror's Bad Fur Day has its own field than Banjo-Tooie. I mean, you had different people working on different teams. There'd be some crossover, especially when they needed to get a game done. But for the most part, it was different people, all talented people, all brilliant people, but with different visions and um, ethos. And uh, it just, Land 2 was just the kind, uh, kind of the first time where I was almost disillusioned a little bit with Rare, where it was the first time where they presented something that... I didn't think was 100% brilliant, and I, I thought the game was so much fun, and I and I loved it. But why couldn't they just come up with a new story? It wouldn't have been that hard. You could have just said, "Oh, the the Kremlins have a smaller island next to Crocodile Isle," or yeah, you know, like they did with Land Three. They could have easily just used the same level archetypes and just used them in different locations. You know, they could have come up with another island with the same stuff on it. <laughs> just in a different order and honestly maybe they they didn't have time i don't know when the land 2 assignment was given to them but maybe it was a rush job um and i mean it it would it would have had to have a pretty quick turnover but i don't know i mean they, they accomplished it with land 3 just fine and um without knowing the politics or specifics about what went on i just have to assume that um there there is this I don't know. Maybe they just didn't care, or they thought gamers wouldn't care. But um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, it it's it's just it just it's just I'm question mark for me to this day. Like why why this weird blight on an otherwise perfect record of brilliant half cock stories? I, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest, I mean the story to Donkey Kong Land One and Land Three were both a bit crap. Like um. Just foregoing story in the first, just foregoing story entirely is just kind of one step ahead of that, to be honest. Yeah. The story of the first game yeah. is basically, you know, I bet you can't do it on the Game Boy. And the story of the third game is, hey, there's a lost world, go find it. It's it's so simple. And so the idea of just reusing the story from the SNES is basically, you know, just one step ahead of that, really. Yeah. Or one step behind, I would say. One step behind, uh, I mean, yeah. it's. it's <laughs> the, but the thing is. Donkey Kong Land 3 and Donkey Kong Land 3 have such brilliant storylines partially because of their shittiness. And, um... <laughs> yeah. And you don't win any brownie points with me when you reuse um, a story that really should only be used once. Where Donkey Kong is kidnapped and Diddy has to prove himself as a hero. That's really a one-shot deal. I- I'm sorry. Like, you can't just have that story again. Um, or you can't just pretend it's the same game or that Country 2 didn't happen mm. or that Land 2 didn't happen if you prefer the events of Country 2. It, it, I, I don't know. It, I, I realize, like, I, I, I'm saying this as somebody who's very much about the story of games and um, I'm sure back in 1996... Um, it wasn't as much of a big deal back then as it would be back then, as it would be now. 
no, no. Um, even if it was cared about by most people at Rare, I'm definitely, you know, the Greg Males of the world, um, you know, at least had enough foresight to care about that stuff, but, um, eh, whatever. We, we made it work, and it's still, it's one reason why I, I hold so tightly to our fan wank story, because it allows me to appreciate Donkey Kong Land 2 as a game, rather than getting hung up on, again, the superficiality bullshit that um, actually keeps some gamers from giving it a fair shake. So... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that being said, um, there, there is one more thing about the game before we give a quick overview of the worlds, because again, we're not going to go through level by level. No, just... And tell, yeah. tell, that, that would be silly, especially because these are just mostly remixed stages. Uh, all, all worthy uh, of you playing, by the way, and giving a fair shake, but... Um, it would be kind of redundant to go through all the archetypes and saying, well, you know, this is what I think about the, sh the, the ship archetype. This is what I think about. Yeah. No, I mean, if you want our opinions of that, um, listen to our, the four-part Country 2 spotlight from last year. What I want to do is just touch upon Land 2's unique elements. And um, one of the <laughs> unique elements it brought was um, the first, um, I guess, the first time we ever heard of the music renditions in a video game of one Grant Kirkhope. That's right, yeah. I mean, okay, yeah, he was just kind of um, doing 8-bit versions of David Wise's music, but this is Grant Kirkhope's first gig. <laughs> and I would say yeah. he did it pretty well. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, well, he, he did it pretty well, although I don't know why Lockjaw's saga was reused <laughs> as much as it was. Um, yeah, it especially because pretty... what annoys me is that they did um, rattle, no, not rattle about a snaky shanty, and they used it in the first level, but they didn't use it in any of the other ship deck levels, and it would have worked fine for that because it's the same melody as um, Clomp's Romp. So it's odd that mm -hmm. you hear Lockjaw's saga in all of the ship deck levels when they could have just used snaky shanty, especially considering, considering Rattle Battle itself still uses um, <laughs> Lockjaw's saga. It's just bizarre. There is a patch that I've seen, which is very good, that patches it back into all of the ship deck levels. Oh, really? Yeah, there's also, like, yeah. um, the end credits use Swanky's theme, which is um, an alternate instrumentation of the um, bonus intro. You know, the... Do -do 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 the problem yeah, with yeah. Donkey Kong Land 2 is it uses the bonus theme, then you press A, and then it starts again. So it's like... Do -do 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 <laughs> yeah, there's a patch that um, replaces that with Swanky's theme, which, that's the thing, if it's in the game, why not use it? I, I feel like, um, I understand that the Game Boy can only have so many tracks in it, but they could have used them much more resourcefully than they did. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. Um, but all, all that being said, um, yeah, Grant Kirkhope, it, it's funny how he got his start as something as so unglamorous as reinterpreting the music of David Wise, mm. the, the brilliant music of David Wise. I mean, Country 2 is just one of those perfect soundtracks, the, one of those, oh my god, is this really game music? It was mind-blowing back in 95, and it's still brilliant to listen to to this day. Um, and, and Grant Kirkhope had to basically just make shittier versions of those songs. <laughs> it did it pretty well, I think. Like, like some songs, like, obviously, um, Stick of a Symphony isn't going to work in 8-bit because of the sheer level of instrumentation that goes into it. But I like that he kind of reinterpreted it a little and, like, um, replaced some of the layers with, like, his extra little bits of... Sorry, I'm not a musician, so I'm not sure how to put it into words. But like he, he he added bits to them. Yeah, yeah. he added extra I'm bits not a, to. I'm not a musician either. Yeah, but uh, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um. He he comp so, kind of compensated for the lack of um, uh, complexity by just adding extra little bits of the melody to it, which worked really well. What what kind of bemuses me is that Grant Kirkhope got to start at rare, in in basically this thankless job. Yeah. And w within. Two years, I, I would say, leaped frog David Wise and became the the sound of rare for like the rest of the N sixty four era. Yeah, he, he I mean he, he went from Donkey Kong Land two to GoldenEye 007, which at the time was probably another thankless gig because it's just him reinterpreting the music of the movie GoldenEye. Yeah, um, and nobody knew 
that GoldenEye was not only going to be as big of a hit as it was, but this gen, uh, ge, you know, genre def defining um, flashpoint in video games. Um, and then from GoldenEye, of course, Banjo. Yeah. Um, uh, then he got Big Donkey Kong 64, um, Banjo 2. I mean, Grant Kirkhope became really the the sound of rare on the n64 and um i love that they got them both back the ukulele i think that's really awesome that both grant and david are in ukulele yeah yeah that's really um, cool grant grant also um did um one of the um overclocked remix um donk on country 2 tracks with not only dave wise but robin beanland that's right um, yeah it's all, incredible all that one, the donkey kong rescued remix I think Which, they did it for Donkey Kong Country 3 as well. They got one of them in to do, like... Really? Yeah, for um, one of the Donkey Kong... Yeah, it's um, Jungle Jitters, whatever. It's the Game Boy Advance Jungle Jitters, which is obviously DK Island Swing, but in a more kind of jazzy style. They got... Oh, I can't remember who they, it was. either Grant Kirkhope or David Wise to um, join in on the um, trumpet. It sounds fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I really do love that track because I, that's one of the only times I, I can think of that all three of what's considered Rare's holy trinity of musicians were, were together. Um, I'm not discounting their other talented musicians who've worked there. Obviously, Eveline Fisher, Graham Norgate. Um, but yeah, I think Eveline's uh, retired now, isn't she? She stopped doing music. Yeah, she, she kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to track her down for an interview at some point. But uh, that would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she, she maybe she's hiding with Kevin Callahan and, um, <laughs> and, and Sam. Um, Sam, where's <laughs> Sam? <laughs> All right, let, let's do uh, a very brief overview of the worlds. The worlds, yes. So, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be mentioning the worlds and mentioning wh whenever I can some of the major differences as well as some continuity points I want to make. So, okay. Gangplank Galleon is still the first world. But here, here, here's an interesting thing that um, actually ties in with the larger Donkey Kong canon. Did you notice that Gangplank Galleon is now positioned on the opposite side of Crocodile Isle? It, it's approaching from the other side. Hello from and the other side. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's on the right quite, side, but it's also... Quite all right. Now, now, now YouTube's going to pull this, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright, yeah. It, it's, it's on the, uh, the right side, and if you'll notice... On the uh, map screen of Gang the Gangplank Galleon, Donkey Kong Island is not in the background because it's coming from the opposite side. Oh, so, yeah, that's right. Wh whether intentional or not, that's a nice nod to the larger continuity with Donkey Kong Country 2. One, one of the times Donkey Kong Land 2 does support the idea that Country 2 is still a valid game that happened prior to the events of this one. Yeah. Um... Moving on to the second world, which is massive, one of the largest worlds ever in a Donkey Kong game. It's Creme Cauldron. Yeah, it takes place really forever to get through it, doesn't it? Because it, it's essentially worlds two and three of Donkey Kong Country 2 merged together for some reason. And I never knew why they were merged together. Did they only have enough memory for... I think it like, was because, like, them, the... Well, I, I used to think it was because the shaking effects with Cudgel, like when the um, um, world shakes. But the thing is, Pokemon Gold and Silver managed that just fine, like, you know, screen shaking effects. So, um, I don't know, yeah, I guess they just ran out of memory. Yeah, and they just had to combine the world. Yeah. It, it's bizarre, but, but yeah, the, so so it's Crocodile Cauldron and Creme Key, or Creme Quay, <laughs> as Key. many Americans would uh, would pronounce it, yeah. apparently. But, um, yeah, Creme Key um, and, and Crocodile Cauldron. Now Creme Cauldron, as you said, a urine-soaked <laughs> volcano swamp. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just bright yellow, you know, bile. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was, it was probably for memory issues. They probably didn't have a space to add um, or, or separate out another world, so they just had to clump them all together. But um, it, it supports the Fanon story because... K. Rule only had so much raw matter left of Crocodile Isle, so when he recreated it, he had to kind of combine some areas yeah, to, exactly. to make it work. I can imagine so, they just uh, kind of just crumbled and fell together. 
Yeah. 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 Um, Br- Bramble Blast, though, was um, this, one of the stages from Krem Key that was moved to Crazy Kremland. Yeah. They, they axed it completely from the stage, moved it to Crazy Kremland, and um, Glimmer's Galleon, as we already also alluded to, is also completely different. It's, it's There's still no... called the, kill, still called Glimmer's Galleon. There's no sign of Glimmy, Glimmer anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it was the galleon that Glimmer was once living in, but now there's no Glimmer. Hmm. You have to you have to use light barrels instead, which light up the whole screen, and then you have a limited time before you have to hit the next one. Which, a- as a gimmick, it's fine. Um, I understand why they couldn't do the flashlight effect on the the original Game Boy, but well, um, it was just another character to animate, you know, swimming around alongside your characters. Well, your character, rather. If they can have two Kongs, they can have a fish swimming around, <laughs> lighting everything it was up. Actually a, it was actually a problem they had in the Game Boy Color version of Donkey Kong Country. Um, with Torchlight Trouble, oh, yeah. when they tried to recreate that, um, Squawk's flashlight just illuminated the whole screen. It, it, you didn't have that effect of the light beam. Oh, yeah, that's right. And w- which, which, which made the whole stage pointless. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Well, to be fair, you, you yeah. could see what was going on. Well, at least on the Game Boy Advance, you could see what was going on anyway. You didn't need to need Squawks in the first place. Well, yeah, that, that was the Game Boy Advance, but the Game Boy Color version, he just lit up the entire screen. Yeah. Like, it, his, fla- it, his flashlight didn't act like a normal flashlight. It acted like it was some sort of, like, radioactive tanning bed. Um, yeah. Uh, slime Climb is, is different here. Um, instead of a snap jaw um, attacking you in, in the waters, um, you have radioactive sludge instead. Yeah, exactly. This is that more of that yellow bile that's a mixture of lava and swamp water. <laughs> it's just well, pretty like, yellow. It, it's like the um, the sludge from Toxic Tower. Yeah. Um, it's exactly the same principle, which um, I, I guess because the island is being held together through Kremlin alchemy, um, the it, it's just oozing... Um, toxic waste i i don't know yeah, exactly <laughs> it's just it's just this horrific bile is just pouring out from crocodile the, this, the um risen crocodile isle <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, as you mentioned cudgel is not the boss cleaver is the boss of this world um cudgel we we just assume died at the end of dunk on country 2 he was one of the kremlings who um yeah who did he and dixie flat out murdered him <laughs> inadvertently murdered him accidental genocide yeah. um, but um that that also helps inform us because we we assume that clubba and cudgel are brothers so that helps inform um our view of clubba where he's really pissed at k rule here because he got his brother killed yeah that makes sense that makes complete sense it's it's perfect um, <laughs> it also it also helps g- give um, some <coughs> pathos to the character of Clubba, which, uh, you know, it's weird to say the character's name is Clubba because he has a giant club, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I but, thought he'd just like um, to pop some ecstasy pills, <laughs> you know, and g- go clubbing and just wave his gl- glow sticks around. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> he, he, he did have a club remix on the Overclocked uh, <laughs> CD, um, so maybe, maybe he, he likes the rave scene. Yeah. Um, Crazy Kremland had no Bramble Scramble, the, the best stage in Donkey Kong Country 2. Oh, no, it did. It definitely axed. did have a Bramble Scramble because it's one of the hardest levels in Donkey Kong Land 2. Bramble Scramble is a fucking nightmare in that game. It, you... D- didn't, they, didn't they replace it completely with Bramble Blast, though? No, they did Bramble they moved, Blast. Br- then moved... you do, um, like, the race level on the um, Go Cup. No, the, on the um, roller coaster. Then you do Bramble Scramble. Now, I, I will never forget Bramble Scramble because it's one of the most difficult levels on the Game Boy. So you got uh, two bramble levels, not quite in a row. There's one in between, but still, you have to do two bramble levels in one world. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, if it, it, viewers or listeners <laughs> call in one two eight one four one and K O N G and tell us which one is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know for a fact. I, I had a look at it this uh, just just before we start recording. I played Crazy Crumb and yes, bramble Crumb is there. But well, not only that, but I've got years of experience because it's way harder than the snes version it's a hell of a lot which harder. well the super nintendo version of bramble scramble is pretty damn difficult yeah but the game boy one is really hard there are zingers <laughs> everywhere sing zingers just wall-to-wall zingers <laughs> it's a nightmare all right well uh gloomy gulch has 
I, I guess what you call the first new level in the game. Um, it, Crazy Coaster replaces Haunted Hall. Yeah. Um, which, because they couldn't, again, have the effect of Cackle chasing you through the Haunted Library, nor did they want to have to create the unique um, aesthetic of the Haunted Library for one stage in Duncan Land 2. So, uh, my, my excuse has always been that the... Um, the walls of the library were just blown off completely, um, and and that's why you just have a normal roller coaster in um, what's otherwise a spooky forest. Yeah, that makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that. Whatever. K, <laughs> K rules keep um, also had a new level that they switched out for another one. Um, Dungeon Danger replaces Castle Crush because again they couldn't have the rising floor effect. Yeah, the scrolling. So yeah. Right, so they just had a just normal, boring castle stage without any gimmicks. Yeah. Which, all right. Um, the Flying Croc, um, I don't think it had any substantial deviances from um, from the the one on the Super Nintendo, except um, it, it's interesting, the interior of the Flying Croc looks like K. Rool's castle now. And yeah. um, I'd say it was just technical so, limitations. They couldn't, you know, have the cockpit again, so they just used the castle. I, I always like to say that's because the flying croc was just this burned out husk on the inside, so it was just completely charred. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> so it just looked like an old castle. Yeah, yeah. So, so the lost world in the game, instead of you going to one level at a time um, in, in each of the main game world through Clubus Kiosk, there's one Clubus Kiosk on the overworld, I believe, to the left of Gloomy's Gulch. Gloomy Gulch. That's maybe? right. Yeah. And, uh, so, here you have to pay Clubba one lump sum, all 47 creme coins in one fell swoop, and, and then you get access to the Lost World then, which just acts like a normal world. You progress on, in a linear fashion from beginning to end, which, um, on, on one hand, it, it kind of makes the Lost World less unique, but on the other hand... Um, you, you pretty much have to beat the rest of the game before you can access the Lost World here. So yeah. it makes it, I guess, more exclusive to see. Um, it's kind of like the Lost World in Returns and Tropical Freeze as well. Yeah, well, yeah. The Lost World, which is just one level or maybe three levels, depending on which game you play. Yeah. Um, so well, or, or the 3DS version, which has, you know, several levels based on each level. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> So, um, w one thing that, um, helps support our fan and story is that Crocodile Core, the mouth is already open when you go in, um, where you left it from Donkey Kong Country 2, and there's no more Kremlin source pouring out of it. It's completely burned out. Yeah. Um, the, the inside of the Crocodile Core is now, um, a volcanic, um, lava pit. Yeah. Pretty much. Which... I don't know. I, I, I like to think, think that's a uh, confirmation that the end of Donkey Kong Country 2 happened. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Donkey Kong Land 2 now shows what the area is afterwards. And uh, there's no more Kremlin life source. Yeah, again, Oops. I would just like to say that's just them reusing resources from other levels. But I'll, Joe, I'll play along. I'll play along. Joe, yeah, I'll play along. You, <laughs> yes, yes. That is the real reason why it is the way it is. Yeah. But there has to be an in-universe reason, really, reason why it's the way it is. Yes. Right, right, right. So, I'm just saying, we can have our cake and eat it too. Yes, that's fine. So, so the ending. Um, you defeat K. Rule. Crocodile Isle sinks yet again. Although, this time, you don't have the top half blown off. There's no Kremlin source in the game. So, what happens is the whole island sinks, and each inch of it is blown up all the way down. Um, so, essentially, Crocodile Isle was completely obliterated, and now it's just like... What what was left of it is now blown even further apart, and there's just nothing salvageable at this point. It's gone completely. Um, I I always um, view the ending too because you didn't see K. Rule escaping, hmm. so I always was left to assume this is this is meant for us to think that K. Rule died we're, we're supposed to at least assume he died here it's like a comic book villain death we don't see the body but he didn't make it out so do the kongs just assume k rule is gone now um i think that would be a good idea on the grounds that they completely buy that chaos is the new leader 
of the Kremlings. Right. Yeah, so there. Yeah, they think Kirill is dead, and then when it turns out, spoiler alert, that Chaos is actually a robot controlled by Kirill, that's a big surprise to the Kongs. Yeah, it, it, it's treated like it's a shocking reveal that Kirill could be in the game at all, and I like to think that's because they were thinking he was deceased at the time. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, now, however, you don't see the Gangplank Galleon's fate, because the Gangplank Galleon doesn't sail away. No. So, I always interpreted it as, um, because this is, this is comfort food for my brain. Sure. Clubba, Clubba led the pirate Kremlings away on it. They, they, they got the hell off Crocodile Isle before it even sank this time. Like, they, they knew, like, okay, K. Rool's gonna fail, let's just abandon the bastard now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they sailed away on the Crocodile Isle, Clubba and all of the remaining pirate Kremlings, and they're still out there to this day, sailing the Atlantic Ocean, being all piratey mm -hmm. and just amazing characters who we could potentially see come back when somebody who actually knows Donkey Kong canon gets in charge of the Donkey Kong series. <laughs> yeah. It would be because I mean it would be fascinating when the Kremlings came back if they acknowledged this. It would be very interesting. Well, well my my thing is like the the Kremlings will never go back to being completely pirates again. No. Um but it fits them so well that I want to have a pirate faction of Kremlings that exist kind of th this like alternate faction to K Rule's Kremlings that kind of oppose the Kongs but still oppose K Rule this this wild card Kremlin army and yes it should be led by Clubba like let's use this character Nintendo you own this character he could be a classic character if you would just use him I don't yeah. care that you at Nintendo didn't create him you own him you could make money off of him build him up I want Clubba to be somebody that matters anyway yeah, to overthrow that's, that's... K Rule and be the new leader of the Kremlings and start the <laughs> uprising you know or at the very least, just be this this rogue state of Kremlin. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, that that's that's how I interpret the ending of Donkey Kong Land 2. Um, you at home may differ. Yes. <laughs> so, Joe, final thoughts on Donkey Kong Land 2. Uh, well, I used to think it was just a Game Boy port of the SNES version. But, yeah, you, you convinced me um, a year or two ago that it was a proper <laughs> sequel on, the, on various grounds, and I do really like the idea that this was the last straw for the Kremlings when, when he put them through this miserable hell a second time, that they realised he wasn't fit to be ruler of the Kremlings, so he, they decided to overthrow him, um, and that's what led to the storyline on Kong Country Three, where chaos turns up. They decide he's their new ruler. I would say it's 100% canon, and I'm completely on board with Donkey Kong Land 2 being a separate story to Donkey Kong Country 2, on the grounds that I think it's funny that they rose the island and tried to do exactly the same thing again, only everyone was soggy and miserable, <laughs> and everything just went wrong, and that's when they decided that's enough. <laughs> you know what? That really should have been the subtitle of the game. Donkey Kong Land 2, soggy and miserable, and everything goes wrong. This has been a File 2 production. Terrico.